Welcome to the game, everybody. We are picking up with some uh, Lost Minds and the Mad Mage. So, uh... Oh, it's... <laughs> God damn it, Snow. <laughs> um, I'm going to let the players uh, tell you what's been going on recently. Um, but, uh, let you know what I got coming up this week. Uh, tonight, I've got some more Space Marine. I have some... Uh, I've got Adventures in Wild Mount. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, which that game is coming to a close very soon. Uh, we are going to be, uh, probably four to six sessions is what I'm aiming for. And that will wrap up a almost six year campaign, by the way. So, you know, definitely tune in for that. Monday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, I have some, uh, I believe we're playing Space Marine 2. With our normal Monday group, which consists of uh, Fluffy, um, your Black Up, Zequas, and Heavy Metal Sasquatch. So definitely tune in for that. Hi, Mama Snow. Thanks for stopping in. Um, but we are going to get started. So without further ado, get to the game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Welcome in. So, who would like to tell us what's been going on and what is happening right now? Where we're at. Take a stab at it. Send it. Thoros met Junto, Rolara, uh, excuse me, Thoros and Kugra met Junto and Rolara over breakfast. Uh, we all went to the fair. Uh, Rolara had some flying lessons, managed to get out of it unscathed, amazingly. Um, Tried the horseback riding. Junto and Rolara succeeded. Thoros failed. Took a broken rib. Uh, Rolara used her rogue skills to increase her income. Um, and I forget exactly where we ended up, but uh, that's the last part I remember. So the last place you ended up, you all were, uh, well, other than Ray and Zinn, you guys were heading back to the um, yawning portal to catch a bath and relax for a little while before dinner. Um, <laughs> as for Zin and Ray, we're going to pick up with the two of you because Ray, you had received a letter after Ren had left. Um, this one was dropped off by a couple of what you know to be Wizards. In fact, the kind that killed your mother. So, as you and Zin headed out, what did you do for your day? Surprise! We're married! Just kidding, just kidding. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Shut up! Like... <laughs> Oh shit! Damn. Um, uh, at least you're married so, in real life. It's not a not an actual rejection. That's right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So on the way out, we fixed up Yukina, and um, I grabbed a couple more more arrows from the um deal I have with them because I have to collect arrows every week for the plus twos and stuff. Um, and then once we left the town, we went on a hunting trip. Uh, Ray came along to kind of see nature and stuff, as well as I think she wanted to do some foraging while we're out there as well. Um, for some herbs and stuff. And then uh, yeah. we'd head straight back to the end once we were done, because it would probably be late at night by the time we get back. Okay, and how long did you spend foraging uh, snow? It was just a day, right? So like eight, eight, eight or ten hours? Eight yeah, or ten I would hours. Say like, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me find my... Because we need time to that. get there and time to get back. Let's see if this is it. I think this is it. Yeah, this is the one we're using. Oops.
All right, so <clears throat> area outside of water deep would be considered. Well, depending how far you went, if you're just going like outside the walls or are you guys traveling a little bit? I would say we traveled a little bit to get to like the foresty areas like so that Zin could hunt. All right. Yeah, because I think just outside the walls is just like meadows, isn't it? Mostly, yes. Uh, I'm just yeah, looking to see. I, I can't remember Reasons. if it's uh, outside of. I think it's never winter. There's a mountain out. Got to find the map. Okay, so just outside of water deep, yeah, it's mostly plains. Uh and there is a small forest, but that would take you like a day and a half to get to. But you could easily find some game in the uh in the plains. <clears throat> okay. Mostly small game. Um, you know, squirrels, rabbits, um probably find some birds. All right, so we're going to start with uh, Zen. Let's give me, uh, give me a couple survivals. Shit. Okay. Pants, pants. Apparently your rolls are going to be fine. good today. They're, they're not going to be good after this. <laughs> not when it's important, huh? All right. Um... Yeah, you uh, you managed to find yourself uh, a small family of rabbits. It's your first thing you find. What do you like to do? I mean, I hear rabbits pretty good, so I'll take some rabbits. Or I'll, I'll try to snipe a couple rabbits if I can. Okay, make your first shot. Sorry, just removing my plus one arrow stuff. Yep. You pierce one to the ground. Now I want you to give me a d20. You want evens. <clears throat> okay. You managed to get a second shot off before the rest of the family runs. Give me a second shot. Yep. You managed to pierce two rabbits. As you are, uh, nice. as you are starting to uh, field dress them, you begin to hear uh, the buzzing of a lot of bees. Oh, one, bees. one, one happens to float past your face and land on a flower near where you're field dressing. These are definitely, um, definitely looks like honeybees. Interesting. <clears throat> Um, when the honey, when the bee starts to kind of like leave, like, cause I assume it pick up the pollen and then head out. Can I like kind of follow it as best I can? I know they're pretty quick if they want to be. Yeah, sure. Um, you kind of, uh, follow as quick as you can. Your rabbit's slung over your shoulder. And as you run them down, you manage to find a hive. About 30 feet up in a tree. It's quite a large hive, too. Very nice. Is there any sort of, like, covered-ish trees in the area? What do you that mean, I might be able to kind of Like, trees that are full of foliage so I can get up into the trees and hide there just for a little bit? See if something comes? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah so I'll do that, then. And just watch for a bit. Okay. Just pulling something up real quick. Really? That's all the hit points that has? That's crazy to me. All right. You know what? It doesn't take long. Um, as you're sitting up in the tree, you suddenly hear the brush moving behind you. 
And as you kind of like shift a branch to the side to look down, you see a, give me a nature. I want to say advantage, nature. There goes my rolls. That's with advantage? Are you sure? Uh, yep. Yep, he's got two six, or six and a four. That was, um, not great. Uh, it's a big animal. Not really sure exactly what it is, but it begins to climb the tree. You see about uh, six, six inch long claws as it quickly grabs uh, uh, the, uh, the trunk of the tree and launches itself up about 10 feet at a time. It takes all of two seconds to get to the top. As it gets up there, it immediately starts attacking the hive. Murder it. Murder it. The bees begin to revolt. And as they continue to try to attack this thing, it seems unbothered as it slams its claw into the hive, pulls it back out, and starts licking the honey off of it. Um, I will take aim and then fire once I notice it's like distracted by the honey, of course. Sure. Uh, it's about the same height up as me, I assume, at this yep. point. Yeah, straight roll. Yep. Does he get advantage because he's sneaking? Uh, you no, know I what? Isn't it like an ambush? Oh. Yeah, I, I would say yes. yes, actually. I'll take it. That is a hit. Give me your damage. <clears throat> you send an arrow and it pierces straight through the neck of this creature as the creature uh, throws its head side to side for a moment before falling from the tree dead. Uh, the bees follow it to the ground and continue to try and sting it. Uh, before long, the, the ground is littered with, with dead bees having um, stung this creature and quite quickly passed away from doing so. Is there more bees, or was that like the whole amount of them that I can see? There is more, but you can definitely tell that the, um, the amount of bees that now live in this hive is quite a bit less. Okay, okay. <clears throat> and they've stopped stinging the bear at this point? Or the, the, sorry, the animal at this point, I should say? Yep. Okay. And this is can not I a bear, at, by the way. I was going to say, can I stare at the animal and identify what it is? <laughs> now that I have time to look at it? Uh, well, yeah. you've never seen something like this. Uh, however, player knowledge? Uh, this is a honey badger. A giant honey badger. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, I'll climb down, and then I'll go in for a, a, a bit of a closer inspection if I can. Um, and probably try to drag it a little bit away from the hive if I can. I don't know how heavy it is, so. <clears throat> um, it, it's, uh, it's a couple hundred pounds. Um, this thing is about the size of a humanoid. But as you try and uh, grip it and start to move it away, you can feel that this thing is nothing but muscle and very thick skin okay back when not, when you killed it well for me when, when you killed it your arrow didn't even pierce all the way through its neck which is crazy because you've seen this your arrows pierce all the way through plenty of creatures That's wild. Well, I'll uh, I'll inspect it a little bit and see if there's anything I can find that might be usable from it. Then, like sure. Look at it, claws and stuff. You uh, you inspect the claws, and these claws seem to be uh, very thick, um, very sharp. You think you might be able to use the claws, uh, of which it has, I think, ten. No. Oh. All right, 20. 
whether you can use anything else uh, because you didn't even know what it was at first. Uh, yeah, it's hard. You're you're not really going to know. So you can collect more of it if you wish, and we will have to decide later on whether it's going to be useful or not. Okay, I'll stick with the um, the claws, and then I'll maybe ch like kind of cut into the the carcass just a little bit to see what the meat looks like, if it has any marbling at all, or if it looks just like gross r muscle. Oh, this shit is fucking. But you do notice that the the skin on this creature, most creatures' skin is you know a couple millimeters thick. Skin on this is at least half an inch, maybe more. Oh, wow. Curious whether this will, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, whether this will be useful at all, or if maybe you could sell it. Yeah, if it, if it feels like it's something pretty thick and sturdy, I'd probably start <clears throat> skinning it as well. Um, sure. Uh, give me a. I'm gonna say five survivals. One for the uh, uh, the pelt. Uh, and then one for each limb of claws. Sorry, I did the first two advantage, but we could just use all the rolls. Well, uh, attempting to get the uh, first set of claws, unfortunately, does not go well. Um, you don't manage to break them, but you manage to, uh, say, chip them. So you feel like the first limb is not going to be good. Uh, 26. The second uh, limb, you get all five. And they seem to be pristine. And in fact, as you kind of run your, your thumb up one of them just to test the sharpness, it, it feels almost like, uh, player knowledge, a, an exacto knife. Box cutter. Shit is crazy sharp. Sweet. Uh, 19, you managed to get four of the, uh, of the next limb. Get two more survivals. Seventeen, uh, you get four of the, uh, four more claws. And sixteen. I'm gonna say you get an imperfect pelt. That will lower the price a little bit if you can sell it. Gotcha, makes sense. Ren, as he's off hunting, you decide to do some foraging. Uh, oh good, I forgot, I gotta rotate. Okay. Oh, that's potionless. I want the other thing. The... Oh. <clears throat> All right, so four hours uh, searching for components uh, per roll. So that is two rolls. I need two herbalism checks, please. <laughs> All right, I need 1d4 and 1d6, please. All right, so you get... Uh... Where the hell are the type here? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. You end up with uh, nine planes ingredient. Sorry, uh, that is wrong. You get four common and five planes ingredients.
You said four common? Four common and five planes. Okay, sweet. And with that being done, you guys meet up <clears throat> in the evening. Uh, are you spending your night camping out? Um, do we think we have enough time to make it back in time? So you guys probably would have left at like 6 a.m. or so. Time to get to yeah, there, probably. so it probably would have been outside the city by 8. Another hour of travel to get to an actual plains area where you could do hunting puts it at 9. 8 hours of hunting and gathering puts it at 5 p.m. Yeah. Yeah, you you hmm. probably make it back by about 7, 8 o'clock. Could we have a little camp camp <clears throat> feast and then you head back? Or is that too stretching it? Uh, If you were to sit in, like, build a campfire and then cook over it, you're looking at probably another two to three hours. So yeah, that would yeah, put so it we, somewhere yeah. between like 10 and 11. Uh, getting back? Okay, we'll just head back. We can, we can eat once we're, once we're at the end. Okay. So you guys head back. Um, <clears throat> let's see, the other three. Thoros, Junto, and Relira. You guys have washed up and uh, come down for dinner. Uh, the tavern is bustling. Uh, Matrim's still there playing. Um, Dernan is behind the bar. And there's uh, quite a few patrons. Uh, some of which are rowdy. Some are just sitting quietly and eating their dinner. Um, enjoying their surroundings in this famous tavern. But you all seem to finish up at the same time and uh, pop your doors open to come down. It is currently about 6 o'clock. You all sit down, and Dern comes over. What can I get you? Oh, just whatever's on today's special for food. That is not uh, you. I'll, you I'll... You're, you're not here oh, yet, Sin. Sorry. Oh, you're talking to the other people. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thoros, Relira, and Junto. I'll have, I'll have a glass of your strongest ale, please. Aye. And you, Elf? Oh. Sorry, Thoros. Oh, you're good, you're good. The Elf sits silently. Maybe having mic issues? Hello. There you go. Yes, having mic issues. Hi. Um, uh, Junto, is, would you like to eat anything? I'm happy to get dinner. Sure. Why not? Well, why don't we have some um, some appetizers brought over? All right. Whatever the cat would like. He kind of chuckles as you uh, you call the tabaxia cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, very well. And uh, you biggin, how about you? Large ale, ribs, please. I I could do that. Uh, a waitress comes back a few moments later. Um, with um, these strange potatoes. They seem to have uh, strange cream on them and uh, some cheese seems to be melted on them. Uh, these are my signature fries. These, uh, I call them uh, Supreme Fries. And uh, I'll be out in a few moments with your ribs. Uh, he also brings out your, your drinks. Some ale. Two, two strong ales and a uh, a 
and a bottle of, uh, or sorry, a goblet of wine. Sets down on the table. Thank you. After What's about the celebration. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just asking Relier what the celebration was for. You were very helpful back there at the rodeo competition. And um, we we just might have a, a little extra pad in our in our pockets for the time being. I don't remember, Blair. Did I witness her steal it? No. You were uh, you, you were aware that something was going down, somebody stole something, and then you know that she came out from behind a box of crates over near the uh, the bedding tent. Or the bookie's tent. Okay, so, cool. And he so kind of helped you're, me. You, 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 you kind of think she might have had something to do with it, but she hasn't actually mentioned it so far, so you are not 100% sure. Although you've also known her for a little while, so... You know, draw your own conclusions on that one, I guess. I'll just smile. You and Thoros, uh, you know, bet against me as I would have bet against myself as well up there, and I... I didn't want you to to lose that bet. It didn't seem fair. Um, I've got your back, at least for a little while. At least for a little what's while. The, what's your plan? What are what are, are you waiting here for people or? Oh, I'm waiting for friends to come back in my brain. Oh, uh, yeah, I know, waiting for some friends to come back. They want to off on a short trip. They should be back shortly. You might like them. They're, they're very similar to you two. And the one is a tabaxi and one is an elf. You should stay and wait. Okay, I might. Then it comes back out with... Uh, um... Uh, the ribs and uh, bizarre. I see you still have some fries left. Do you, do you not like them? We're just saving our appetites. He places uh, three plates of ribs on the table. You notice that yours look a little bit different from the others, though. Thoros? How so? They're much larger. Or no, sorry. Uh, they're much smaller ribs than the other two have. Sorry, I almost gave you mad cow disease. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yours are much smaller than theirs. And uh, he notices you noticing and says, Ah, didn't really think you'd uh, want the kind of ribs I normally serve, so I, I had some made up special for you. As he places the plates down. I appreciate that. Pork, I assume? Yes, yes. Uh, I know uh, technically Minotaurs are not cows, but I still kind of felt that it would be bad taste, of course. A little close to home, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Not trying to be racist or anything, just, you know. I was so confused for a second, and then I forgot he was a bull. <laughs> <laughs> Thoros, your plate looks a bit light. Is there anything else you'd like? Good, thank you. I, uh, I'll start with this and then see where we go from there. Sounds like a plan. As uh, you guys eat up, Din and uh, Ray, you guys are getting back to the front gate. 
Uh, oh, I, I should have done this earlier. Uh, I would like Zin and Ray both to give me a wisdom save, please. Ouch. Really? I had to hit a nat one. Yeah. <laughs> Those good rolls really are gone. I told you. Yeah, they left me really quick. Oh, damn. Look at Ray go, though. It's because yeah, I got a... shared some of that, or what? No, I got a feat on my level up, so I upped my wisdom. So... You feel something, Ray. You're not really sure what it, what it is, but it while you're out foraging it, it quickly goes away and you kind of let it slip your mind. However, Zin, you feel something. You also don't know what it is. But it lingers for some time before it dissipates. And that's when you kill the badger. As you guys head back to uh, the city, you guys get towards the front gates. And... Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but the letter stated noon of that day. You were supposed to meet them, right? Um, I never opened it. You didn't. I thought you did. That's why no, you guys took off for the day. And you didn't like that I didn't open it. No, but I think afterwards you said, fine, I open it, because you didn't want to ruin it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you did, because that's why you guys left for the day. Okay, okay. So, as you guys approach the gate... Yeah, because you were all sad panda bear, and then I said, fine, I'll open it's it. because the start of your character arc, man. <laughs> Damn right, I was sad panda bear. I'm a sad panda. Um, as you guys approach the gate, three hooded figures step out and they pull down their hoods, revealing bald heads, tattoos. Maybe you did not read the letter, young Ray. You're supposed to meet us today. Hmm. Ray will... Uh, I don't know how to... Um, okay, Ray will just be like... Just shrug. Be like... What... What about it? Well, we wanted to discuss matters of importance. And if you're worried about us doing something, I mean, understand that I hope you'd be aware we cannot legally use magic inside the city. Would you be okay having that meeting now? Uh, Ray will just, like, look over to Zinn just to, like, give him the eyes that, like, he's not gonna leave her. Zinn will, like, kind of give him a affirming nod, of course. Okay. Um, she will grab onto Zinn's hand and then just, like, gesture the bald... I know who they are, right? You are aware the, that the these are pro these are the wizards from the same order who killed your mother was trying to kill your father. They they match the description, the vague description description your mother gave on her deathbed about running. Description. Shut the fuck up. I might have already. <laughs> I've got clue in my coffee. All right, that's my excuse. Yeah. Okay, so then Ray will just like grab onto, um, Zin's hand and then just be jester to them and just be like if we must two of them back off a little bit they take a, a couple steps back um, in fact all three of them do and another one you hear 
know what? You can both give me perception, please. Wow. There you go, Zen. Zen, you hear it. Slow, soft footsteps from behind you. However, as you start to turn to look, footsteps stop. The hood lowers. And there is a woman there. She looks young. Maybe late 20s. Hello, child. It is so good to see my granddaughter. Oh, I do wish she was not such an abomination. She kind of uh, screws her face up in disgust. Uh, Zin's gonna glare at this woman, even though he's not. She's not talking to him. Hmm. Seems cat has your tongue, hmm, girl? Uh, Ray will be like, I, I don't know. I, I don't think she would really respond because I think she would just be like overwhelmed by the situation and kind of scared. Oh, sure was a shame of my daughter about my daughter's death. Only something had been able to prevent it as she kind of like looks at her fingernails, which seem to be uh, a little elongated, almost sharpened to points. She says, Well, I will be seeing you again soon. Are you aware of exactly how your mother died by chance? Ray will just like squeeze onto Zin's hand because she's like visibly getting angry, but she's trying not to lose it. And then she'll look at this woman and just be like, I don't need to hear lies from somebody like you. And then like turn away and like start walking faster away from this woman. The three others attempt to block your path. Please now, child, I'm telling you no lies. It was me. It was an accident, but it was me. Won't you stay to have a little chat? At this moment, a wind picks up. You both can roll me uh, perception at advantage. <laughs> I'm going to say 14's not enough. You're you're a little distracted to to really sniff the air, but the wind seems to be coming from the uh east and towards the city. And it just happens that she is uh upwind of you. As the wind rolls in, Zin, you smell something horrible. The smell of death and decay and rot. Well, child, will you not speak with me? I would like to explain. Ray will just like, she's like gritting her teeth. And she'll just be like, there's nothing that you can say to me that I want to hear. Very well. But if you will not hear me, at least hear this. The next time you step outside the city, and we are aware of it, we are coming for you. And with that, the three figures in your way move out of the way to the side. Ray will just like drop Zin's hand. She's just 
pissed and then she'll just like storm off but she's like trying not to show anybody that she's like crying trying not to cry Zin, I'm assuming you follow, or would you like to take a shot? Uh, no, Z Zin is going to uh, to to just smile at her face. So nice meeting you. And then he's going to do like one of those slow finger guns to her, and then turn and walk away. She smiles at that. Oh, I look forward to it. And they don't seem to move. They just watch you guys head into the city. Takes you a good 45 minutes to get back to the tavern. Uh, you can pull yourselves in here, uh, along with Yukina, if you have her with you. I think I uh, she, she's not out, so it'll just be me for right now. Oh, after you healed her, you sent her home? Yeah, just to make sure she was all rested up, because I don't know. Because I think it just brings her intelligence back, so she's probably tired still, right? I mean, her body would have gotten enough rest. Oh, I was just think like mental state, like going from like no intelligence to normal intelligence would probably feel weir weird on a person, but I don't know if there's any. Probably give a gnarly maybe. headache. Yeah. So, like, maybe let her rest for the day. Okay. As you guys walk in, you look around and you see Thoros, uh, Junto, and, uh, or sorry, you see Thoros sitting with a tabaxi and a, um, a very, very pale skinned elf. Uh, you notice Kugra, however, is somewhere else in the bar. Where is he? You know what? He's going to be over here. Talking I'll to be somebody. flirting with someone. Kugra? Yeah, maybe he's flirting with like a pretty elf lady or something. No, he's he's talking to a dwarf. In fact, he's talking to... Uh, less exciting. Let's, let's make Fine. a table of dwarves. Make a table of dwarves. In fact, there also seems to be a, a bit of a lineup behind uh, this particular uh, area here. So, where would y'all like to go? Want to go see Thoros and his new companions, or you want to go talk to Kugra or somebody else? Matrim's around, mm. Dernan's around. Um... I say we go talk to Thoros just because, like, Cougar hanging out with some dwarves seems more normal than uh, Thoros hanging out with two specific looking, indivi uniquely looking individuals. Okay. You guys can head over to the table. As uh, Zin and Ray approach, uh, we'll start with Junto. Would you like to describe what you look like, sir? I am a black tabaxi with bright blue eyes, uh, wearing monk-esque robes, and uh, wearing a... Hold on. I had something for this. I have a, an enduring spell book on the table in front of me, wearing a clockwork amulet, and I have a tattoo in my fur but it's shaved so there's like a random line of, in my fur on one of my arms hi and relira would you like to describe what you look like i am a very pale uh elf looking being um with very uh bright eyes and everything else is, is quite uh, uh, contrasted with, yeah, very light hair and skin. And I have, I seem to have uh, some tattoos across my body, um, wearing a lot of um, black and uh, dark clothing in perfect condition with some streaks of, of bright purple. Uh, and I have, how do you say Sorry, you cut out there. After how do you say? Uh. 
Hello? Hello? Oh, there you go. Where did you last hear me? Uh, you said, uh, um, how do you say? Oh, uh, Lear? A liar? Liar, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a liar, uh, with me. Cool. And as Zin and Ray approach, would the two of you like to describe yourselves? Um, so Ray is just like also following behind Zin. She's not really like paying attention to the two at the table. She's more like focused on Thoros because we know each other. Um, but Ray is an orange kind of tabby cat tabaxi um, with like green eyes and very like her clothes are very nature driven. So they're made of um, like they have like leaves and bones and kind of leathers and fur more like natural kind of materials however um she looks more human than she does tabaxi uh, yeah 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 because my mom is a tabaxi and or sorry my mom is a human and a dad was a tabaxi so i'm kind of both yeah, so she's got like the cat ears, uh, but she doesn't really have any fur on her skin. Uh, she looks like a Nico. <laughs> yeah, like an anime Nico girl. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The uh, coordinating ceremony, I'm sure that they had. Yeah, she's uh, technically humans, and Tabaxi's cannot uh, create children. So, uh, player knowledge, she was created through. Uh, not just birth, but there was magic involved. Yeah. So, player knowledge, uh, your your character might find this extremely strange. Because you would have never seen anything like her before. Um, Zin. Strange and for real, for real. <laughs> Zin, would you like to describe yourself? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Zin is fairly tall. He's about six feet. He's uh, very lean, but quite muscular. Um, you'll notice his skin is charcoal colored and he has silver hair. He's obviously a drow, but something looks a little bit off. His, his skin's, his skin isn't quite as dark as some of the other ones. His ears are just a little bit shorter than, uh, most drow. Um, and then he has got these bright purple eyes. Um, he has two scimitars on his hip and a bow slung over his back. His armor is kind of in like greens and browns uh he's got some scale mail that isn't made out of metal um and uh everything else is pretty much leathered on him so um all three of you see these two approach the table you may continue whoever wishes to start Um, so Ray's just like falling behind Zin and her head's kind of down and she's kind of like wiping her tears away and not really like focusing too much on the environment. But out of the corner of her eye, she notices Thoros and she just like walks up and like sits beside him with like her head down. Hi, Ray, what's wrong? Um, She'll just like kind of sniffle and... um. With her kind of head in her hands, she'll just mumble and she'll be like, um, she'll just be like, apparently I have a grandmother. Is that good and or then, bad? And then she'll just like gesture towards Zin because she's just like too overwhelmed to talk about it. And she'll just be like, ask him. I will. And I'll motion Zen over and say, before we get too far, I should introduce everybody. Zen and Ray, this is Junto and Rolara. I met them while you were gone, and they were nice folks. We've been hanging out. And thought you might like to meet them, too, since there were obvious similarities between y'all. Uh, Zen does a, a little bit of a, a short bow, and he says, it's very nice to meet you, uh, Junto and Rolara. Uh, what brings you uh, brings you over here? Okay, wait. So as Zin is saying this, Ray will kind of like look up, like 
not noticing that there were people and then she'll just see um Junto and he's like cat and this is like the first like cat creature that she's seen on and then she just kind of like quickly wipes her face and gets really kind of nervous and shy and then she'll like hide a little bit behind Thoros because she's and her eyes are just like wide with like what the f like like a happy shock if that makes sense yeah uh I, I'm gonna say it's pretty obvious. Uh, the two of you can uh, can definitely notice this. In fact, everybody at the table notices this. I'm just gonna say that yeah, I think you look pretty weird too. <laughs> Zin chuckles audibly at this. Um under her breath a little bit she'll be like i've never we haven't you're the and then she just like can't put together like finish a sentence because she's just she's never seen another tabaxi in the city and people are always looking at her like she's a weirdo Well, if you just get it, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not very common for people like us to be out and about around here, huh? Ray will just like shake her head and then motion for the the bartender to come over, and she'll order. She'll just be like the two of my usual, which is the milk. And then when he brings it over, she'll just like slide a milk over, just assuming that he also enjoys milk. That is amazing. You've just been profiled. Yeah, I'll look at the bowl of milk. Uh, um, it comes in a cup. Oh, a cup of milk. Um, and say thank you. And Ray will just like blushingly smile and as she's like kind of hiding behind Thoreau. She's just like infatuated with the fact that there's like another cat creature. Not only in the city, but like maybe in their party. And her tail behind her is just like wagging like a happy cat. Yeah, Dernan, uh, Dernan brings the milk. Can you push one across? Profiling your possible new party member. Um, yeah. I mean, it's fine because we're both cats, you know? We have that, like, instant. Oh, is, like the, is that a not. thing? <laughs> no, like, she thinks she thinks that, like, they're on the same page, you know? Because the only other tabaxi she's ever known are people, like, in her village. And this is the first one she's encountered really outside of her village. So she just assumes that they're all the same. Fucking dying. Uh, uh yeah. <clears throat> so, Ray, you were telling us about your grandmother. How did you find out? As, oh, sorry. Um, I'll just throw the letter on the table and then, like, gesture to Zinn to be like. Yeah, so so Zinn will lead, read the letter to the rest of the party so they know what's going on. Uh, and then he'll let them know that uh, on their way back from the trip, they had a bit of an encounter. And he'll kind of talk them through what happened there as well. Because uh, he explains about Ray's grandmother and her admitting that she was the one who killed Ray's mother. Um, and basically giving a threat to uh, Ray specifically. Although then 
you're pretty sure that anybody who is with Ray is going to be caught in the crosshairs. Yeah, and he'll make sure that he lets Theros know that that, that is something that he needs to tell everybody because it's not just going to be a her thing. It's going to be everybody's problem. I welcome the opportunity. Yes, you always do seem to be ready for a fight. Diplomacy is overrated. <laughs> so, Ray, you probably want some time to think about it, but we're here to support you. Uh, once you know what you want to do, if you want to do anything about it. Speaking for myself. Uh, Ray will be like, um, just let the group know that like she's upset because now she's not only kind of damned herself, but people um, that are with her and she'll kind of express that she feels a little trapped that they can't leave the city. So if we leave the city and they attack us outside the city, we can kill them legally, right? That would be correct. That would be correct. Got it. But uh, let's let's set this aside j just for a moment. Uh, we'll kind of let every everyone process for a bit. Um, oh, he said, "Roll a perception." I mean, I whispered it for a reason, but sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't shit. know that was a whisper. My bad. You have to start future, future messages with this is a whisper. <laughs> I mean, they're a different color than the rest of chats. <laughs> I thought you were like drinking or smoking or something. That's that's why you, you did it. I mean, damn, I'm that much of an alcoholic, huh? Shit. All right. <laughs> I said or smoking. smoking. Holy oh. fuck. I mean, I he can talk said, through a smoke, bro. <laughs> he just said you can't handle your liquor. I think I think that's what he said, which some days he's correct. Some days. We all have those moments. All I have to say is someone was banned. I was only suspended from Twitch, okay? Uh... Well, I guess I might as well just fucking say it out loud now. Zen, you're the only one um, with your eyes in that direction. You notice um, a bald person with their face covered and their hood partially up in the upper left corner. Seemingly, uh, seems like they might be keeping an eye on you out of the corner of their eye. Uh, Zin will turn to face them and just give them a little wave. He doesn't indicate any kind of uh, acknowledgement, but he also doesn't turn his eyes away. Yeah, that's good enough. He knows. <clears throat> Sorry, at, go ahead. At this moment, uh, you notice Kugra start walking over. Oh, hello, everybody. It's a good day to be alive, isn't it? Zen, as he sits down next to you, this, this, uh, Durgar reeks of alcohol. Although he doesn't really seem that drunk anymore. Yeah, he's probably extremely hungover. But he sits down next to you, and you're pretty sure you could light the air around him on fire. Sounds like you've been having a, a good day. Aye, aye. The festival in town. Did, uh, did you manage, you and Ray manage to stop in at it? It was quite interesting. Should have seen Ralira here. 
Poor girl flew through the air. She pulled off some crazy moves at the end, though. Keep herself alive. It's kind of impressive. It was awesome. Ray will just hear the word festival and then mix that in with the fact that she just saw her murderous grandmother and now she's mad. And she's just like, slams her fist on the table and is like, there's a festival? Hi. It's the uh, start of Midsummer. It's the Midsummer Festival. It's uh, mostly like up in the market, but uh, I, I think I saw some things down by the docks as well. Or heard of them, sorry. She'll just like huff and then cross her arms and then have like a pouty face that she missed it. Oh, what's your side for? I'm pretty sure it goes for at least uh, today and tomorrow. Immediate ears perk. She's ready and excited to go. She'll just like look over to Zinn with and be like, give him that eyes like, can we go? Uh, Zinn, Zinn will take note of this, uh, but continue talking to Kugra. He's like, oh, so you uh, you were hanging out with uh, Thoros and the two new friends as well. Aye. Those two there can ride a bull like nobody's business. You'd think Thoros being, you know, and he just kind of motions up and down at Thoros. You'd think he knew, would know how to ride a bull, but apparently not. To be fair, it was a horse. It was, wasn't it? Then replace the word bull with horse. You know, farm animals, all the same thing, right? We all look alike. Yeah, I know how it is. Stan <laughs> chuckles with that. Ah, uh, well, anyways, the reason I came over is, uh, I got to tell you, I'm, I'd be leaving probably before y'all wake up in the morning. Where are you going, Cooper? Well, you see that table over there with the lineup? Yeah. Uh, just so happens they are a, uh, a mercenary band. However, after speaking with them, most people just sign up, but hold on a sec. Sorry, my grandmother. Um, you know me. Uh, I have some... Although I'm a mercenary, I still have to sign up with the right people. If they're not uh, not very... What's the word? Honorable, I won't go. But they seem like they're good people. So... You know, off to wage war with my... Uh, a copper axe and armor and such. Sounds like a great time. I wish you well. I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Because uh, if I'm leaving early, I'm going to have to get to bed pretty soon. Uh, Zin will just look at Cougar real quickly and be like, and you're sure this is what you want? I, I, I gave you my word. I fulfilled my word. It's time that I be going. Zin nods and says, well, I won't stop you. If this is your path and this is your path, I wish you all the best. You as well. And as he stands up, he stops. And he turns around. Uh, by the way, it's not a uh, stone cutter. It's, uh, it's Copper Cutter. You all can give me a history check. Oh, now he whispers. Now he whispers. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, Junto, you also can. Ralira, I'm gonna say yours is gonna have to be a disadvantage because you're not uh, really from here. Since you are, uh. He already rolled rip. That's all right. Just roll again. Oh, 
<laughs> uh, all right, so 18 and 6. So, Raleary, you don't know. Uh, I'm going to say 17 is high enough, though. Junto, you recognize uh, the name. Kind of rings a bell. And you've heard of this mercenary band. Um, it was basically a, a whole family of Dorgar. Uh, that sometimes would come to the surface to do mercenary things. They're, the band is actually known for often turning on the people who hired them. They got a bad name, and at one point, you had heard that their entire uh, mercenary band, the entire family, along with everybody who had uh, worked for them, had been slaughtered. He kind of waits to see if anybody recognizes the name. Well, it was a pleasure no. to meet you, Ugro, Copper Cutter. Aye. You all as well. Take care. Be careful in the Undermountain. The lower you go in the levels of the dungeon, the more dangerous it becomes. If I'm ever here again, I'll stop in and see what you're up to. Till then, good luck. May your skills ever be sharp. And he heaves his axe up over his shoulder and begins to walk off towards the uh, bedrooms. I liked him. He was a nice guy. Good in the fight. Ray will nod. How did you all meet him? Uh, Zin, Zin will uh, look at uh, Rolara and be, well, we actually happened to meet him uh, in, in Under Mountain at uh, Skull Port. There was uh, a bit of a feud between uh, the Drugar and uh Xanathar's guild. Um and he kind of joined us as he didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the the crowd down there. And I met him when they broke me out of jail, which I am still eternally grateful. Uh, a good one indeed. He seems to be Yes, he he seemed to have a good head on his shoulder. But uh, I don't understand those type of uh, politics they seem to have down there either. It seems like you've been through a, a hell of an adventure together. Yeah, one, one or two, some would say. It's been, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting go of it. Are, are the, the two of you um, looking to explore down there as well? Or are you just kind of wandering around uh, Waterdeep? We, well, I, I uh, met him by the river. He was quite injured, and he joined me on my visit to the town for the festival. Uh, I come every time there's a big festival. Um, you know, I, I'm drawn to the, the chaos and the, the vibrancy of it. Um, but where is it that you're headed? Uh, Zin, Zin first makes a comment. He's like, ah, how the beauty met the beast. Um, before he continues on, uh, we're actually headed, well, we might be a couple ways. I mean, you heard one of our, our qualms that we have right now, but uh, we were also heading down into the Undermountain to find the, uh, the Mad Mage. Uh... It and what would you need with the Mad Mage? 
Well, have you uh, ha- have you not heard of uh, such such an interesting character that he is? I've only heard rumors. I'm from a small village, long, long away from cities. Zen, Zen, Zen kind of nods, understood. Um, and he'll kind of like fill him in on what he knows about the Mad Mage. Um, because he knows a fair bit now that he's talked to the Mad Mage a couple times, even just through like his voice. Um, and then he'll kind of comment, he's like, to be honest, uh, we're not here to make friends with him, we are kind of here to, to stop him, if you will. What will he do? Savage, was it from Fan, uh, Fan Delarin? Like when we left there that we got the mission for the Mad Mage? Um, it was... Been a uh, long time. It was more that uh, he was causing a lot of problems. Um, it is technically yeah. his home, but uh, yes, it, it was from uh, it was from Siladar. So you got it when you got uh, to yes. Water Deep, I think? Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, I'm going to have to have Ray roll something because it is the first of the month, by the way. Um, however, <clears throat> um, you also. What do you mean, the first of the month? Oh, did you forget about your, uh, your deal with uh, Gundar? Or uh, a percentage of the Spellforge? Yeah, you're good. Oh, I did forget about that. Yeah, so did I until I happened to, to fucking be going through handouts. I was like, oh, yeah, that's coming up. And I looked and it's like, it is the first. So. <clears throat> Rent is due. <laughs> um, good choice. But. Uh, so you're the things he's been doing, it's been causing problems. But some of the denizens that live down there and in the Underdark. um have been fleeing. Um, and the best place to go was the surface. So some of the denizens have been coming up and causing problems. And the... Um, holy fuck, I can't believe it. Uh, the Lord's Alliance has been dealing with that, but they need somebody to uh, deal with what is causing the issues beneath that is sending everything up to the surface. Yeah, so I'll kind of relay this over in the the deal that uh, Siladar had uh, had asked us to to help because of these issues. Mm, might you like additional assistance on this quest? I don't think, uh, I, I know I've got nowhere to be, and Valera might look over at the tabaxi and give him a look as if he might like to come along as well. Yeah, yeah. I figure why not? Uh, Zin Zin will not. He's like help. Help is always wanted, but uh, but bef- before you you decide to come with us, you you must know that it is not a safe journey, and there is many uh, dangerous things down there. I can't guarantee your safety. I'll do everything in my power to keep everybody safe, but uh, guarantees that is not something we have the luxury of uh, of providing as he kind of like side glances over towards the bar. It's exactly the thrill that entices me. I would like our two new party members to give me an insight, please.
Yeah, when, once you click it once, if it doesn't pop up, sometimes it just it just takes a moment. Uh, especially Sorry. on Saturdays, Roll20 is laggy because the, the servers are bogged down with all the people playing D&D and shit. No worries. No, it's really not a big deal. I'm going to take your first roll anyways. Just letting you know, it, it, it just takes a while sometimes. So if you click it and it doesn't show up right away, usually just give it a minute. Um, Ralira, you... Behind Zinn's eyes, um, when he's mentioning how dangerous it is, uh, you kind of get the feeling that the full original party is not here anymore. Zinn looks, although he's trying to remain stoic, it seems like behind his eyes there's a sense of loss. Uh, Rhaenyra has a compassionate, quiet look in her eyes. This certainly sounds like a tenuous, a difficult journey. Zinn nods and says, well, any any case, the, the help is greatly appreciated. We definitely, as you can tell, uh, need the, the manpower or woman power, if you prefer. So dinner and rest, and then if we don't need anything more, back down. Um, Zinn will look to Ray to see if that's something that she's okay with. This is my response. So Ray's, Ray's okay skipping the rest of the festival and heading down then? Oh, oh yeah, the All festival. Right. Yeah, yeah. Can we do that after the one? I just want to go tomorrow. And then we can go down. Because we got to also pick up pickles. Uh, well, then Zin will look to the other two. He's like, uh, would you like to spend another day at the festival before we go down? So that you, uh, I'm gonna th stare at Ralira and ask Ralira <laughs> if he would be comfortable going back for a chill festival day. Um, before Ralira answers, uh, the things you would know, Ralira, is as uh, um, Cougar did state, there is other areas where the festival is taking place. Not all in the market. There's some down by the docks. Um, there's other stuff in the market as well that you guys didn't get to, um, but that's up to y'all. Just a little information for you. Yeah, we didn't make it down to the docks. Perhaps we could explore that area tomorrow. Ray's tail just goes like so excitedly crazy. She's just like nodding with her big like cat like eyes being like, yes. That sounds like a plan. Perhaps there'll be some fresh fish. Fish and pickles. I like you too. Zen chuckles. She's like, um, I don't know if you quite understand what pickles is. It's no. not a food in this. Ray's scenario. like, Ray's like giggling and she's like, pickles is a sugar glider. Even better. Oh, 
by the way, a question for the older players. <laughs> One second. Oh, sorry. Um, it was Ren who had the bag of Hunter, right? Nope. Z. Z, Z has yeah. it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, Zen has it. Okay. Hmm. I'm kind of like the holder of everything, um, or I was. I should say we can change that now. If anyone's not comfortable with that. Whoa, that means there's meat pies in there still. Yeah, there is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we got so many meat pies, guys. You're going to love it. Dernan comes back. Oh, uh, sorry. I almost forgot when I saw you walk in. Uh, Ray, I have something for you. He hands you a, uh, a, a rather uh, medium-sized sack. And he sets it on the table and he hands you a letter. Uh, this this came for you uh, while you were out. So I just figured I should give it to you before I forget. Raylick looks confused for one second and then opens the letter. Dear Ray, here's your first payment. Sorry. <clears throat> Dear Ray, here is your first payment. Thank you for believing in us. Uh, it was a short month. It took us some time to, to get up and ready, but expect more of this and in greater numbers in the future. Gundren. Ray's just like, oh yeah, I forgot about these guys. Look, we made money. And she like goes to open the sack. There is 215 gold pieces. Uh, Zin will look at Ray and, his, and say, I believe that is your money. That was your deal struck. We decided to take uh, the items back then, if you recall. Ray like is like, hmm, true. And then as she's like saying that she's pulling out gold coins and she gives 50 to all of the people. Um. That would oh, be sorry, 250. Sorry. <laughs> There's yeah, yeah, not yeah. that much sorry. in there. I'm going to split 100 gold pieces between the four of them. Okay. The 25 gold each. Uh, Zin, once again, uh, you are one of the only people who can actually see much in the way of people. Uh, although I guess there's people down the corner. Uh, everybody can give me a perception. Jesus. Talk about opposites. Right? Rip. I know. I'm going to say Zen with your, you got the highest. As she's doling um, uh, out money. Mine was 21. Yeah, but he's the highest. This, it, it, how, how we like to oh, do group oh, sorry, checks. Yeah. In, in this particular instance, the group check, um, the highest one is going to be the one that notices. Yeah, I didn't notice his role. Yeah. No worries. Um, so as she's dipping her hand in and pulling out fistfuls of gold coins, Zen, you kind of look around and the, the, this particular one up here is still looking at you, but he's been looking at you the whole time. And as you kind of pan your view from him, you notice that there are several people watching Ray pull this money out of a bag. And to the average folk, a single gold is a lot of money. Um, Zin will kind of whisper to the table and do a like a slight point, got to note what he what he just saw. Yeah, there are several tables around here that have noticed. <clears throat> oh, Ray will be like, oh, and then she'll like start putting the bag in her her money away, and then as she's like sliding the gold coins, kind of. 
to everybody at the table. She'd be like, for the festival, but shh. Thank you. So as uh, you put the bag into your bag of holding, now people know exactly where you stored it. It's going to be an interesting night, ladies and gentlemen. But at this point, it is hitting about 10 o'clock. <clears throat> it's fine. Uh, Thoros and I are going to share a room. I think I'll be fine. Oh, you're sharing a room now, are you? Well, I mean, if I'm going to get mugged. <laughs> I think Zin would just send Yukina into your room um, since he noticed and have her like sleep at the door. So as it hits 10 o'clock, what do you all wish to do? Definitely retire to bed, especially given the the eyes on us financially right now. Hmm. Yeah, Zin will do the same. Uh, but right. he will bring Yukina out to sleep in Ray's room. And he'll have her sleep like right at the inside of the door. Okay. okay. So... As you guys retire for the evening. Okay, wait. Just for like role playing sake, can Ray try to set up a booby trap by the door? So that if, even though Yukin is in there, if somebody opens the door, it makes a noise and drops something under their head or something. Okay, what, do you, what are you trying to set up then? How are you doing this? I'm like home alone style, you know? Like Legos under the windowsill type deal. Yeah, and like maybe a bucket of something sticky over the door. Okay, so you've got rope. You got anything to attach the rope to the ceiling? And the, well, you can wrap it around the, the door handle for sure. But anything to like uh, some sort of a pulley system or anything like that? Or. I mean, I have. I'm a master wood carver, obviously. So first, I guess you're going to ask Dernan for a bucket. Um, <clears throat> what do you want in it? Let's do... Hmm. Would, would he sell honey at the bar? Um, enough to fill a bucket? No, just like, it doesn't have to be like a full bucket. Just like something sticky. Sure. Okay. Think of like the honey and the feather situation, you know, bucket and then honey and then they're sticky. I mean, usually it's tar, but yeah, I get where you're going with it. <laughs> Is this open for brainstorming? Or are we all? Yeah, by all together? means. It, it, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, Ray, did did you tell the tell the people what you're planning or your party? Yeah, like before we go upstairs, I'm like, yo, we should booby trap just to be safe. You should and try then she'll, like, pat, pat her bag of holding. <laughs> you should try a chair under the door. That buys you extra time. Yes, I realized yes, the yes. thing I was going to say, I, I, my player wouldn't know about. You are the player. It's your character that might not know. Oh, I don't My character <laughs> would know. I was, I, I was wondering if there was, like, any gross lard and stuff from that big meat that Zen was working with. Oh, that would have been a good idea. I didn't take any with me. You are in Durnan. a tavern, however, that serves yeah, I was food. Say, Durnan might have stuff like that. Like a grease bucket that he, like, dumps his extra grease into. Perfect. We had ribs tonight. There's gotta be some There's some gotta be grease. So you're asking for a bucket of grease and animal fat and that kind of stuff? Yep. All right. Uh, uh, I'm sure I can scrounge some up. May, may I ask what it's for? I'll just, like, look at him and be like, shh, and then, like, flick him a coin. Oh, can't be arguing with gold, now can I? 
He goes back and he gets you a bucket. He's like, uh, pretty sure I got some, uh, animal organs and such in there, too. You want that, too? She, like, gags a little bit. No, thanks. All right. Just getting a little chubby for the, uh, for the festival, huh? I get it. Right. Ray just, like, rubs her belly and nods. He's like, yeah. Oh, just be careful. I had somebody come in and ask for a bowl of this once and ate it like stew. Pretty sure they didn't leave the bathroom for a week. Ray just does that, like, cat gag, you know, where they stick the... Uh, and then she's like, thanks. Uh, she hands... Er, sorry, he hands you a bucket of animal fat and grease from the, the cookings and the, the traps. I don't know if you've ever smelled the grease trap before. Oh, um, yeah, restaurant industry. 20 years of my life. Yeah, I'm pretty sure restaurant ones get cleaned out a lot more often, though, than, say, like, a grocery store. Oh, God, it made the entire store fucking smell like hot, wet shit. It was so gross. Gross. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. He he kind of, like, hands you this bucket, and he's plugging his nose as he hands it to you. Just, uh, you know, enjoy, I guess. And as he hands it to you, the, the smell hits you, and you can't help but just gag. It, it's horrible. This, uh... So, like, mid-gag, Ray will be like, this'll work. Alright, so you guys retire for the evening. Uh, you each go to your rooms, uh, except Yukina, she goes with, uh, Ray. And you guys settle in for the evening. And at this point, we are going to take our, uh, ten-minute break, because I need to set up a map. So... We'll be back in about 10 minutes, so 17 minutes after 3, please. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Right. The water elemental stone, I think. All right, well, we're going to take Sorry, care of all. that in the morning, but for right now, yeah, yeah. we are just about ready. I've got the map set up. Oh, fuck, I didn't, put any, I didn't populate it. <laughs> All right, um, let me throw you guys in your rooms. Uh, da, 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 da. I right. see nothing. No, that's because I haven't dragged you in yet. Oh. There's Ray. But. Oh, that's a nice room. Ben? Uh, <clears throat> Zen, if you can drag Yukon in, I'll put her where she's supposed to be. Just put her outside your window. Oh. Oh, yeah, I guess you can see Ray, no, I just can't you? To... Yeah, yeah, I, I just stopped <laughs> her in. That works. But, yeah. I don't, which, uh, this is, this is windowed outside on this side? Yep. Yep. And that's door. Got it. Yep. Thoros does not have his room lit, just a uh, goggles of night on. Oh, shit. There's only four regular sized rooms. And then there's. Told you we should have shared. Put Dunto and Ralira in the same room with a very large with lots of beds. We'll just say you paid extra so that you had uh, more room. And then uh if you guys should have oh Ralira does not have Ralira, can you look and tell me how much dark vision you have? I'm pretty sure you have some being a the type I of I should have are. some. Uh let me see. It's probably 60, yeah? Sixty. 
Julian's coming to help me find it. Yeah, it's 60. Perfect. And what about, uh, let's make sure I got Julian set right. Yeah, his set. Okay, gold, gold, gold. So now that that is all taken care of, I uh, just need a moment. We're almost there, people. We're almost there. I was not expecting it to take me this long. A mode, I guess. It's the Kahlua. It's not the drink! That's what we're supposed to say, right? Wow, I even spelt thief wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it um, tastes a good day. What's their uh, bef before we went to bed, was I would I have enough time to ask Rolara and Junto if either of them has any magical expertise in general? Sure. Do either of you two have any magical expertise? That's a negative ghost rider. Oh, it's sad days. Uh, Rolara, do you do you uh, have any skills with magic? He also does not. That's a negative. Ghost Rider. Oh, God. No, this sucks. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to ask Savage how much it's going to cost me to fill my ring of spell storing when I need to do that. Oh, yeah. You don't have your spellcaster for that no more. No, I don't. I don't. That's sad days. Oh, no. My iced coffee's gone. Now that's sad days. I'm sorry, Zane. I didn't even think of that. I didn't think of it now until I was like, um, oh, How yeah. selfish of you. God. <laughs> yeah, that was an expensive item. That's fine. I offered to do yeah. it, but, you know, he doesn't want my... Uh, no, he, he wants to make himself does. untouchable. That's what he wants. Trying, but I seem to get touched anyway, so I don't know if it helps enough. That's because I made want it so if you, spray in there? if you if you do get touched, I, I've had to make it so that if you do get touched, it hurts because you're so untouchable. Insta death. Well, you know, rangers are not very good in five E, so you got to work around it. Yeah, so I'll have to get some numbers from you for what like a third level spell cost to fill in first levels. Uh, so if you look in the magic item handouts, it would cost the same as the scroll. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, How much is that and what is it used for? So I have a ring of spell storing that I can fill with spells. Um, and then I can cast those spells even though I don't have the ability to. Um, which, uh, Fluffy's previous character used to uh, be a mage, so it was pretty easy to handle. Um, but let's see. Uh, spell scrolls level one is 100 gold per spell, and level three is 400 gold per spell. And those are like consumables, so I have, I have money, but I just have to be very careful with them. I got you, boo. You want it? You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm like trying to because I all this money that the money it came into, I'm like not quite sure what it actually means. And my intention is to share it with you all in useful ways, but I don't really know how to do that or whether it's a lot or not a lot. It, it that all <laughs> come along as, as we play more because you'll figure out how much things cost and 
and realize how much money we do or don't have, I guess, right? Because, like, day to day. Also, if you like to buy lots of, like, if you need to buy equipment or something. Yeah, because equipment can be expensive. Um, Like, day to day stuff is cheap. Like, food and all that is fairly, like, pretty, pretty small. We have so many meat pies. Like, rare items are like 5K or more and things like that of gold. So, just I don't know how much money you have on you. Yeah, not that. Also, we as a group, since basically the beginning, have been pretty good at like sharing our our gold if somebody really needs something. So, okay. I think what would go with that. And you may have already caught the implication. If there's something you like and you don't have it out, just holler. And I know I, for one, would be happy to share. Yeah, same as these. Ditto. Oh, I just got to put a couple commoners on, and we are good to go. Lateral damage. Okay, I have um, a random question. How old is Junto? Um, Junto is 32. Okay, okay. And I did forget to actually block you guys from being able to see outside of the map zone. To do that. And we then we are ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> so Ray, you are trying to set up this trap before you go to bed, right? Yeah. So, I'm going to need a survival to tie the rope to the door handle. And how are you securing it to the roof? Um... Is... I don't know. Hmm. Do you perhaps have a cantrip or something that might help in this? Not unless poison spray is useful in this one scenario. <laughs> oh, you didn't take uh didn't take Druidcraft? I don't even know what you're talking about. I've had the same four cantrips. Three. Three and a half since, like, the beginning. Well, I didn't know if you had Druidcraft or not. I don't memorize your spell sheet, man. Come on now. Well, get on it. That's your job as God. <laughs> that is not my job. Um, okay. Hmm. Would anybody like to help her uh, in setting up this trap? I'll volunteer. Cool. Any ideas? Uh, I've got a hunting trap. I feel like that would have some sort of a pulley device so that when they go in the cage, it like snaps shut. All right. So you you figure out uh, roughly the proper area to like kind of pin this section of rope 
to the ceiling so that when it opens, it just hits the bottom of the bucket and spills the contents on whoever's stepping in. Now, as you have now procured uh, and set up this trap, um, as you leave, you hold the bucket, Thoros, up, and you kind of hook it into uh, the, the piece in the ceiling that you've slammed in, in uh, the ceiling, leaving a small hole when you go to retrieve this later on. But it's in there nice and tight. At least I'm pretty sure it is. Give me an athletics. Hey, before, yeah. <clears throat> you play sports, bruh? Right. <laughs> you, uh, right. you slam this thing into the roof and you hook the, the rope around it. And, uh, As you do so, you kind of like step out the door before releasing the bucket. So that it is on the inside of the door. You head off to bed. <clears throat> Everybody's in the room settled in for the night. You can allays on the uh, bearskin rug in your room, right? Staring, at, staring towards the door. As the night progresses, the sound from the streets in the festival die down. <clears throat> the crickets uh, are easily heard. Even hear sounds of um, rats and cats in the street. Is anybody staying awake or is everybody going to sleep? I think at some point we should have like a meeting to discuss uh, our plans so that after the festival we can in, in get the moving. middle of the night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right now you're deciding whether you are awake or if you're going to sleep because it is it is nighttime now. Any any discussing of plans and whatnot can be done the next morning. If you live, anyways. I'll sleep, but I'm propping a door. Or a chair back under the door in my room. Okay. I'll sleep as well. Right? Okay. Yeah, I'll go to fucking sleep. Send it, dude. All right. <clears throat> and really, Aaron Ray? Um, I'll sleep, but like not soundly. And I go into my trance. Okay. <clears throat> As the night progresses onward. We all drift off to sleep. Considering the events of the day... Most of you sleep rather soundly. Ray. You do sleep, yeah. but your dreams are permeated by visions of your mother on her deathbed. And a certain word continues to play over and over again. Run, 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 and you awake just as you begin to hear the lock on your door click. You can have perks up. And she looks over at you as your eyes have snapped open. And then you hear the click. And you kind of stands up and kind of gets low on her hindquarters like she's ready to leap. 
what do you do? So I'm going to, like, kind of crouch up on the bed in, like, a readying stance with my staff. But I'm going <clears> to <throat> be on my guard. But I'm going to wait for them to come in the room. Because we did set up a trap. Okay. Ralira. And Ralira, you're going to have disadvantage on this perception check due to your trance. You are still okay. awake, but you're kind of, you're still slightly out of it, right? Okay. You begin to hear a very quiet whispering outside. Uh, you look over and you can see Junto in the bed across from you. Uh, he's still sound asleep. Zin, you can also give me a uh, perception at disadvantage. Yep, because I'm in a trance as well. Uh, let's see. You can just grab yourself. Zin, you do not hear it. However, you do hear something. And the first thing you do hear is a clink. And Ray, you notice this because as your door starts to slowly creak open, a grappling hook is launched into your window. And at this point, we are all going to roll initiative, please. <clears throat> are we on the map yet? Because I don't see anything. And I just want to oh. my tokens. All right, give me a sec. Uh, yours was not set either. And you got Goggles of Night, right? Yep. All right, give me a second. I will make sure that that doesn't happen again. Where is Thoros? No, I'm muted. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Zin, are you muted? Or, I mean, uh, does... You kind of goes at the end of your turn, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. She goes, like, on my turn set, but after I take my turn. Alright, so I just need Thoros's, uh... Um... Yeah, I still need to be in a map. You don't see yourself right now? I see nothing. All I see is black, and there's, like, a little... Oh, I'm a retard. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I was going to say, like, I, I gave your token dark vision. Like, you should be able to see yourself. Now, is that, does that factor in advantage? Because I've got advantage. Uh, yeah. So if you mouse over, you see how instead of, uh, if you mouse over somebody else's. No, no, it already factored in an advantage. Okay, then my bad, my bad. See, Mr. see if you if you scroll up to Zin, you look at his twelve point two. It says one d twenty plus five point two, 
initiative. Got it, got it. Okay. But if you look over yours, it's got one D twenty comma one D twenty KH one. It's it's the code for um rolling cool. it at advantage, but it just it takes the bigger one. So although works for me. Yeah. All right. Let yeah, me... and if you show if you show the dice rolling too, like for example, I can see that there's two D twenties on the table right now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. I'm good. Finally. Okay. Sorry for the delay. Let's see. I guess I should open the stop locks. My God, the only problem with having a 4K monitor, man, you open a stat block and go to put it on like uh, an 800p monitor, and it's just, it's massive. It doesn't even fit on the fucking screen. Okay, there's that one. And I need this one. Okay, right, and there is that one. Where'd the other one go? There it is. Uh, no, Rolera. All right, I will open those other stat blocks when I need them. All right, so. Uh, Gento, you are still asleep. However, uh, Rhaelyra, as, as uh, we roll initiative, um, you heard sounds outside. Would you like to say anything? Try and wake Gento? Sure. Um... Rilira can will say his name a few times. I'm just saying that wouldn't wake me up for shit. Might want to roll for that. <laughs> are hey, you I'm... uh uh are you whispering or are you well, like what calling is it him? that's going on? We're hearing somebody turning a door handle. Uh, you are hearing whispering outside of, of your doors. Um, the only people who know for certain something is going on right now is Zin and Ray. Uh, the only thing you heard was whispers in the hallway. Can I, uh, go up to the door and press my ear against it to listen closer? Sure. As you get to the door, give me a uh, straight perception. You hear, I think this is it. I think this is her room. We're going to take that bag of, bag of coins from that, uh, that strange cat looking thing. Are you ready? And then at this point, uh, you may say something to try and wake Junto. If you wish, or you will have to wait to do anything else until your turn. How, 
Oh, that's the only thing I can do. Yeah, because we're uh, we're we've technically already rolled initiative. I'm just backtracking a little bit to give you a chance. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, I'll wake him. He said to wake him. I'm yeah, that's because he knows he's first in initiative. <laughs> I wake Junto. So if you look, you see that thing that says turn order there, and it's got the list of people with numbers. So how that is, is whoever's at the top, it's their turn. So if you didn't wake him, he would have to wait until his next until the top of the next round to take a turn. Okay. How do you how do you try to wake him? You you like shout a little louder or what? Sure. Push him off the bed. Okay. As you shout a little louder, Junto, you hear your name called. It takes you a moment, kind of stretch, and you notice Relira at the door with her, her ear against it, and she's kind of giving you a look as she, she says your name over and over again. In uh, not a super loud tone, but like a shouted whisper. We are rolling in somebody else. So, Junto? All right. So, Junto's going to recognize that shit's going down and he's going to jump out of bed. And uh, I'm assuming the door in front of me is to the hall, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to wait. Is it an action to open the door? It is what is called a free action. So you've got your bonus action, you've got your main action, and then you've got your, well, it's object interaction. So opening a door or closing a door would be an object interaction, which you only have one a turn. Oh. Um, so you can use that to, uh, you know, snuff a candle, light a candle, um, open or shut a door, hit a switch. And did it use half my movement getting out of bed? Uh, yes. But, alright. Oh, and keep in mind, everybody, since you were sleeping, you have no armor on if you wear armor. I know Junto and Thoros, I don't believe, wear any armor, but everybody else does. So, uncheck that until, uh, until the morning. Ha <laughs> ha. Alright, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna just, I'm going for it. I'm in the hall. Okay. Pop open the door, and you step through. Outside of Ray's room, you see three... Um, three humans. And it looks like they're about ready to burst through Ray's door. I'm going to call out that it's time to fuck. And... Actually, I don't have enough movement, I think. It, it, I have 60 movement as a monk, right? Uh, I don't know. What does your movement say? <clears throat> I didn't know there was a thing for that. Yep, speed. Uh, it's right up by your health and stuff. Oh, 55. Um, as, as you say, you call out, it's time to fuck. A very scantily clad woman comes out from next door. Oh, darling, that will cost you uh, five silver. As she just exposes one of her breasts. Um, I'll toss her a gold coin and tell her to get, to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Fair enough. She, t she catches the coin and just wanders back in the room and shuts the door behind her. Um, so it's 30 normal is the normal movement speed for most people, right? So it, it would still use half your movement to get up. So you were prone, so you had 55, so I'll give you 30 from the bed. So one, two, three. You got 10 feet more. And this is a table and chairs, which, I mean, you're a monk. You can easily leap onto it if you wish. Oh. 
Yeah, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go into my open hand pose. And that's all I got. Okay. Uh, you hear the one by the door say, Get him. I'll take care of the one in the room. Alira, or Ralira, sorry, you hear a clanking and you look towards the window. Another grappling hook has been thrown up into your window over here. You guys are about 30 feet off the ground. His movement. Don't know because I didn't open the uh, stop block. A moment here. I got too many and four screens, and it's still not enough, dude. Man, well, cry about it. I am. I am upset about that. I was so excited when I got four monitors. Problems are the worst. They fucking are. Fuck the starving people in Africa. I need more monitors. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, apparently I did open. I just minimized it. There we go. Uh, 30 feet. So you see the, the grappling hook rope. Um, uh, sorry, the rope that is tied to the grappling hook become taut, and you start to hear footsteps on the walls. Now, you can't quite see him because he can't make it all the way up there. He's below the ledge, but that's the space he's in. Um, climb your feet, so... And climbing speed is half of regular. Uh, so yeah, he's only a few feet below, but you, you can hear the footsteps on the wall. One's going to get close. Ray, it is your turn. Um. Okay, I am going to... So just to reiterate, you know that there's somebody uh, starting to creak your door open, and there's also a grappling hook in your window. Okay, I'm going to, like, silently motion to Yukina about, like, the window so that she can get that person. Right. And I'm going to ready a poison spray <laughs> so that when that person opens the door, I can blow it in their face. All right. Am I am I up now, Savage, or are you just doing some stuff in the background? I'm sorry, I was muted. Again. Fuck my life. Um, so <laughs> you awoke as you heard the grappling hook uh enter the raised window and footsteps start to head up. Uh and then you heard a familiar tabaxi voice shout, It's time to fuck. Give me an insight. Yeah, with the words like that, I should get advantage on my insight. Whoops, sorry, not disadvantage. Still 17, 7. All right, so I'm going to say you are not sure whether uh, maybe Junto and Alira have something going on, 
and Gento's just very vocal about it, or if Got it. or if uh it means something else. However, you did hear a metal clanging. What exactly you were not sure. But you're also aware that, you know uh you have a telepathic link with Yukana? Um I think you get Pretty one sure eventually. Um, I'm just not sure if you have it yet or not. I thought you've used it before. Uh, it says you bond, the bond you share with your Drake creatures, a connection to Dragonkind, granting you understanding and empowering you the presence. Um, you gain the following benefits. No, there's nothing specific about that. But I did know that people were kind of being suspicious too. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm right. gonna I'm gonna say with your with your bond, you can probably feel her emotions at least a little bit. And you can definitely feel she's on edge. Okay, yeah. So then I'm gonna be cautious. I'm gonna hop out of bed, grab my uh, my weapons. I I'd probably have them like right close to me, knowing what might happen, and then I'll um kind of rush out the door to check it out. Okay. So half your movement to get up out of bed. Um, I'm going to say it's going to yeah. take your bonus action to grab your weapons and yeah. your object interaction to open the door. Yeah. yeah. Should be so, able to just oh, put, yeah. I, oh, I can open it, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was 10 <clears throat> feet. Or I guess, no, sorry, 5 feet. This is 10 feet. Uh, that, that, that's, that's basically going to be your 15. Oh, I guess you probably could have cut through this square. Yeah, so you're you're at ten feet. You have five feet of movement left. Okay, uh, but I see these guys. Oh yeah, and you see Junto standing on the uh, the table uh, in a stance, ready to scrap. Uh, I'll just like as soon as I pop out. What is going on here? They all kind of freeze and they turn to look at you. And this one by the door says. Uh, you, get that one. You, get that one. And, uh, this one here starts to, uh, head towards Junto, which he will do on his turn, and this one turns towards you, then. This okay. is, this Can one is opening her door slowly. Can I shoot the one that talked in the face, then? <laughs> Send it. Okay. <clears throat> uh... <laughs> yup. And then I assume they're still alive, so again. Uh nope, that one's dead. You wanna describe it? Okay. Um yeah, I just it's as soon as he fin that last word comes out of his mouth, as he goes to close his mouth, the arrow comes through um his right where his teeth would be closing into and out the back of his head. Yeah, you see, like, where, where his teeth were, there's now just a, a, an arrow shaft sticking out. Um, feathers are, are, are just touching his lips. Uh, as, as he slides, uh, slams backwards into the ground, um, it pushes the arrowhead back through his brainstem, and now he's just got a whole shaft sticking out of his mouth. Gross. Yeah, and then the other one is the one that's coming towards me all fire out as well okay yep look at you which 27s plus threes that's all folks i get no more 27s after that <laughs> you want to describe that one too uh s same sort of deal like as soon as that guy turns around he kind of gets one through the as his can be through like the side of the head or whatever Junto, this is your first combat um, side by side with Zin, and you just watch him drop two people in with two arrows. I'm gonna fucking cheer and get amped up for the next one. Also, pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> this one is actually able to make it in as uh, this one gets in the window. He plants both feet on the sill and says, Come on, girly. Give me the gold. And you can walk away.
I believe you were holding an action. Yeah, poison spray him to the eyes. Yeah, you, uh, <laughs> you immediately, uh, as he's talking, you just spin and put your hand up, and a cloud of green mist sprays directly at him. You roll it for me, please. Can you can now use her Drake reaction on that. Um, does it? Oh no, it has to be a weapon yeah, attack. Yeah, has was, to be a weapon. Yeah, attack. I was about to ask. It doesn't specify weapon attack. Con save sixteen, huh? Yeah, unfortunately. As your little poison cloud of gas uh, heads towards his face, he just kind of like waves his hand and it kind of just dissipates in the air. But little parlor tricks are not going to help you. Poison spray is the worst cantrip in the whole planet. <laughs> I have not had it land one time. No, uh, no, I think you've had it land once, literally once. Yeah. In like the two years we've been playing this game. <laughs> Honestly, poison uh, is poison is one of the most resisted um, types of damages. Um, and a con save is pretty rough in general too. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're replacing it with a cloud of glitter. Uh, let's see. He is going to. Uh, he used most of his movement to get up the wall, so he cannot get any closer. But what he can do, he pulls out, uh, two sim uh, he pulls a scimitar out of his teeth, um, and he pulls one from his hip. And he's going to use his, uh, multi-attack to throw them both. Uh, first one's going to be at you, second one is going to be at Yukina. Oh my fuck. Um uh, okay. Ray, what is your HP without your or sorry, your armor without your what is your AC without your armor? Hello? I'm looking one second. Top of your sheet. Right above your your HP, I think. Yeah, that but you asked for it without my armor. Yeah, so just uncheck your armor, right? Yeah. But that's what I'm looking for is my armor. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Sixteen. Sixteen without your armor? Because of your shield. Yeah, because of my shield. Oh, right. Forgot you had a shield. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the first one, you raise your shield just in time, and it slams into the shield and clatters to the floor. The second one uh, looks like, is Yukon's AC 11? That's what her token says. I don't know if that's correct. No, 19. It's not. It's 19. Motherfucker, what? Yeah, you gave her that plus one uh, armor, remember? That melts into her skin. Can't so take that back. 18, <laughs> instead of 18, it's at 19. Fair enough. Uh, this one, you can just kind of turn to Sorry, the side. Sorry, it's 18. I lied. It's 18. 18 yeah, not yeah, it just doesn't matter. It's not even close. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, the second dagger flies towards Yukina, and she just turns. Um... And it slams into the, uh, uh, armor on her side. Relira. You, you are aware Junto ran out, uh, into the open. Uh, from your vantage point, you can see two of them got hit with arrows and went down immediately. There's one left. But you also are aware that there's a grappling hook in your window. What would you like to do? What is a grappling hook? Uh, it's something that old school would use for... Okay, the, the Batman. B 
Batman, he shoots a grappling hook. I mean, his kind of like it would wrap to, like, around help something. Help him climb walls. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Okay, so someone. It seems like someone's trying to get up to our room. Yeah, definitely. Uh, where, where is she? are are those enemies outside of the window? She can't see them. They are below the window. Uh, but this one is the like he's about ten feet below the window. He's climbing up the grappling hook. Which her as a character would know because the rope attached to the end of it has become very taut. Fireball. No wizards. I know it's sad. Not for me. It makes things easier to balance. <laughs> um, Ralira, could Ralira try to cut the rope with her uh, rapier? Uh, it, uh, it's pronounced rapier. Okay. Not, to, not to get confused with people who should be in prison. Oh Very my good. god, Savage. But yes. <laughs> uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, hold on. Let's do this. We're going to measure your distance to the window. Not quite. You have to... You've got to get closer to it. Can I use my uh, boots of speed as a bonus action? And what do your boots of speed do? They double my movement speed. Sure and can. any creature with an opportunity of attack has a disadvantage. Love that. Yes. Yes, you may. You click your heels together, and suddenly you feel... feel fast. So fast. Like, faster than anybody's ever been fast before. You rush towards the window, which you can click and drag your token towards the window to get there. Give her some time, everybody. She's brand new. This is her first combat, actually. So she's learning the ropes there. And as you look over, you can see that the there are four people down there, one of which is nearing the top of the rope. He's still 10 feet down, so you wouldn't be able to reach him, but the bright idea dawns on you. Cut the rope. You may roll an attack against the rope, please, if you wish. You also have advantage because uh, it's an inanimate object. It does not move on its own. So you can add your sneak attack dice as well. That is a hit. So you click the uh, the little the box next to sneak attack. You click that box, and then you can hit the uh, word rapier plus one in chat, and it'll roll it all for you. I'm pretty sure it did for because I clicked it. It hasn't rolled the damage. So, like, it, you, you check the box next to sneak attack? Yeah. Okay, and then in chat, 
where it shows her attack. Uh, in that box, you see Rapier plus one. So you just hit that, uh, the purple bit there. There you go. Uh, it did not add the sneak attack, though. So you can just click the, the numbers next to sneak attack. And it'll roll it. Hey, 29 damage. The rope snaps, and this one here falls 20 feet to the ground. I would like you to give me 4d6, please, for Lyra. Uh, to roll that, you can either type it in manually, or if you go over to the sidebar, you should see something that looks like a D&D &D dice, a d20. And if you hit that button, uh, you can just do the uh, go over to 4. Which, manually. All right. Just future reference, if it helps you. Um, but yeah, another 11 damage. So when he hits the ground, he slams uh, into the ground. And you see his back hit, uh, but his head is cushioned. So he still takes the 11, but he's not knocked unconscious. As it ends up hitting the foot of the man next to him. And he is prone. Do you have any bonus actions? Or wish to use more movement? <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I will... So as a rogue, um, you can use what's called cunning action to hide if you wish. Um, nobody's close to you, so you don't, don't need to disengage. And you still have 25 feet movement speed. What do I see when, I, when I'm... Uh, yeah, what did I see before I went to the window, like, in terms of how the rest of the party is doing with the attackers? Um, so far, Jinto is just preparing to attack. Zin has dropped two dead bodies in the hallway. And there was one man left. Um, as for the rest of them, uh, you cannot yet see Thoros or Ray or Yukina or what is going on in either of their rooms. Okay, um, I'll come out towards there so I can, can keep seeing what's going on and, and be on deck. All right, so each square is five feet, and you have 25 movement speed. You can go diagonally as long as there's nothing major in the square. So you've got five squares left of movement. Okay. Uh, do you have a bonus action you wish to use? You could uh, hide if you'd like, which is requires a stealth roll, and that gives you advantage on uh, your next attack if nobody is, is able to see you. <clears throat> uh, yes, I'll do that. All right, so give me a stealth roll. Okay, so as you try and crouch in between these uh, two small tables here, um, you try and get low and keep yourself hidden, uh, waiting for the uh, either to, to come out and give a devastating attack or wait for somebody else to come in so that you can ambush them. And with that, we move on to Thoros. Thoros, perception, please.
given your Minotaur status, you are, uh, you seem to be a little more prone to, uh, hearing things that are out of the ordinary. And through your dream state, you thought you heard somebody yell, It's time to fuck! And that is, uh, encouraging you to wake up even more so as you hear Zin's bow string, um, popping. What would you like to do as your eyes open? Well, the bowstring gives it context, so I will grab a halberd. Uh, armor is not an issue, and I will head for the door. I lose twenty feet of movement standing up. Right, top my movement. Uh, fifteen. Uh, sorry, how much movement do you have? Forty. Forty. Uh, it would take twenty to stand up, get out of bed. Got it. Got it. You can take your um uh, uh, your bonus action to pick up your weapon. However, the one issue is there is a uh, a chair blocking your door, as you put it. Object interaction? Sure. And uh, then you would have to use your action to open the door now. That works. I'll use my action to open the door. All right. Zen, you hear... Um, Hooves, heavy hoof falls uh, behind you. As you kind of turn your head, you see Thoros standing there, um, naked from the, the waist up, holding his halberd. Smoke billowing from his nostrils and red eyes. I believe you still have about 10 feet of movement. Is it getting hot in here for anyone else? <laughs> Didn't know you were a furry. But all right. Hey, a big hunk of man is a big hunk of man, okay? I don't discriminate. I will move my extra 10 feet, and I have no action or bonus action. So that's me. All right. Let's see, there's one bandit left. He he looks around at his two fallen at uh two fallen allies. And he charges at you, Junto. He's gonna try and leap uh up onto the table, kind of jump onto the chair, and then jump onto the table next to you. Let's see if he can do it. He's definitely gonna make a acrobatics check. Yeah, he makes it up, gets on top of the table next to you, and he pulls out a scimitar, and he takes a swing. Oh, wow. 19 hit? Misa Junto? All right, all right. Junto's ready to fuck. Did, did this dude? Oh, he hit me. A nineteen Sorry. hits. That, that's what I was asking. That that does hit. Yes. Okay. Um, surprised by his uh, prowess at leaping up onto tables, uh, as he leaps up, he he takes a chop and. You try to dodge out of the way, but it just happens to slice into your bicep a little bit. It takes seven slashing damage. But in response, what would you like to do now that it is your turn? Uh, seven slashing damage? Indeed. Junto's going to smile at his newly formed cut and going to give him the good good. What, you're going to get him high? That's weird. Uh, can I ask a player knowledge question? Uh, you may. Is Cat Claws 
different from Monk on Arm Strike in the sense of I can't repeatedly cat claw somebody. Um, take a look at your stop block real quick. Character sheet, I should say. Uh, cat claw. So, um, your cat claws do 1d6 plus your strength. However, being a monk, your unarmed does uh, 1d6 plus 5 as well. Because you, I don't think you've hit high enough level to, for that to be upped, have you? I don't think so. I know it does go up at a certain point. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, uh, don't think you're at that point yet. Okay, I just wanted to see what the difference was. So I'm going to hit him with the kitty claws once, and then I'm going to. Yeah, the only difference is that your, um, your claws use your strength, whereas your other attacks use your dex. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a hit. And then I'm gonna burn a key. And hit him twice with Fury of Blows. I believe you have extra attack already, do you not? I do, but I get two unarmed attacks with Fury of Blows. Yeah, so uh, what, what I'm saying is that's a bonus action. Um, hitting oh, it, so hitting him get... your second time doesn't cost anything. It's it's part of your oh, one. It, cool. It's part of your attack action. All right, so then I'll do that. All right, well, give me that damage before you decide on if you're using your Fury of Blows. Pretty sure he's down though. Yeah, there. That's that's the second one. Yep. I mean, give me the damage though. Uh. Click if on. you just click the cat claws under your number, the yeah. purple one that's highlighted, it'll do your damage. Yeah, and and your monk uh, monk on arm strike. Oh, I'm not used to this. Uh, yeah, you're, the... you're used to playing a spell caster where they, yeah. it automatically rolls that shit, right? <clears throat> I see now. Yeah, do you want to describe how this goes? Um. So Junto's going to cat claw the top of his head. And while holding his head with that cat claw, strike him real hard in the noggin with the other hand while pulling him in for a little more momentum. And then uh, I'm just going to let him fall. Okay. Yeah, his... Uh... <clears throat> He starts bleeding profusely as uh, your claws hit him. Um, however, then with your, your second attack, you punch that same spot. Um, <laughs> and it, the arterial spray just flies out. The wound opens even wider. And he collapses to the ground. Fatality. Um... Oh, okay, so are they all dead? Those ones are. You definitely heard a shout coming back from your room. Uh, it did not sound like Relira, and it definitely sounded like a uh, a scream of... Um... Uh, of fear. So I'm gonna front flip off the... And I see nothing because they're not really there, right? Correct. So I'm going to ask really what's up. I heard noises coming from the room. There's two people outside, at least two people, maybe four outside the window. I cut their rope. That's a big difference in the amount of people I have to fight, but all right, cool. You definitely saw four. I saw there's four of them. All right. Um, 
All right, guys, we got to get outside. I think that's all my movement, though. I mean, you were here. You got lots of movement, my guy. You got what? Said fifty-five. Oh shit! I dude, fuck. You used ten, bro. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm heading down. As you head, uh, get to the let, let's say uh, the the top of the stairs. By the way, oh, is over wait. here. I see that now. So let's see, ten to get there, and then fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, forty, forty-five, fifty-five. I was a little too zoomed out to see that bar. Do you have a bonus action you wish to use? Um. No. Wait, can I dash? Uh, I believe you can do it as a bonus action. I don't know. What 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 does it say? I believe you have cunning action or something as a monk. Let's see any of that. I have mobile. I think it's the same, though. I don't think so. That's fine. Okay. Uh, give me a second. I'm just putting the last two things on the board. Oh, I was just saying, um, there is a way to do auto roll damage if Savage uh, allows it. If that's tripping you guys up, like when your when your attacks hit, I don't know if Savage is okay with that or not. Oops, that was supposed to be to me. My bad. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, you know what? For I, I'll, I'll allow it for Lauren just because uh, she's brand new and it'll make it a little easier for her. I just prefer it not to be used because then you can't be like, oh, I'm gonna add you know this to it because I, yeah, I, I rolled like super high damage, you know what I mean? Yep, that's fair. Um, so Lauren, if you want to try it, there's a little cogwheel in the top right of your character sheet. And once you click that, the fourth line down directly from that says auto damage roll, and it says do not auto or damage roll, and you can switch it to auto damage and crit. And then click your cog wheel again, to, or click your core base to get out of that. Awesome. Thanks, C. No probs. Whatever helps everybody. I prefer the other way anyway. Like, I like to do it, but I know, like, if you're Trying to remember how it all works. It's easier. I also think half the game he six, sits next to me because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> a, a little Julian relatable. has a desktop and I'm comfortable on the couch, so he runs over. <laughs> nice. nice. Perfect. Damn, but Ray, you've been in this game for over a year, though. Damn. No, she's getting pretty good. I'm also playing a druid for my very first character ever. Okay, back off. That That's fair. That's fair. Spellcasters are really hard to play for first timers. I, I will totally give you that. Yeah, I especially did not with like all the concentration that. spells and stuff like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It did teach me but the I'm game very fast, though. This I also true. play a druid in my Baldur's Gate, so that is kind of helping in this too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baldur's Gate definitely helped me a lot out too. 
but then I also learned bad rules that don't actually exist in 5e. <laughs> That's also valid. <laughs> It's all right. Uh, the, the next game I start, if anybody wants in when I start it, uh, I'm going a little closer to um, to Raw. I'm just trying to make gods in Wild Mount for, for specific reasons. So, Ooh. yeah, that's the reason Maybe that we can everybody's able PG... to get so high. Maybe we could do a BG3 heroic run. Oh, God. Oh, like where you die and all that? You can't, like, it's uh, more like true D&D? Yeah. They made it even harder, by the way, on the new patch. Oh, good. Oh, are you yeah. serious? We didn't even beat it the first time. There's also, like, uh, 14 or 17 new evil endings. So if you chose, if you choose to do the Dark Urge. Yeah, there goes another Oh, it actually hours. matters? Yeah, they made it um, more playable for people that want to do uh, an evil run. There's like a lot more um, like verbal choices and conversations, and there's a lot more cutscenes and different endings and stuff like that. Yeah, they even built in a mod section inside the game now, so you can do your mods directly inside the game. That I saw. That's lit. So, yeah, anyways, wait a little bit till it's all there. Sorry. Back to real D and D. Um. Whoa, Baldur's Gate is real. <laughs> oh god, no. It, it's missing so much, which makes sense. Uh, anyways, anyways, well, we can talk about that later. Um, yeah, another grappling hook comes flying into your window, Relira. And he's going to be able to, it's 30 feet up. So yeah. He didn't have to move quite as far. Yeah, this time, he actually gets into the window. And he, you rolled a 15 on your stealth, so he's going to roll perception, because currently he does not know where you are. Which he rolls a 12. He pulls out a rapier as well, and he's scanning the room, but he doesn't know where you are. So that is his turn, because... Actually, you know what? I'm going to dash. Thinking you've left the room. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. He does now notice you. However, he cannot do anything as he has used his, um, his action to dash. But he says, So, you thought it was funny, huh? Maybe I'll drop your ass out the window. And then we flash to the other side. Uh, do, do. I'm gonna climb up. Uh, let's see. I want Relira and Junto to roll me. Perception, please. Wait, why am I rolling perception? You'll see. Damn! You both hear a shriek that turns to bloody gurgles. Coming from this room over here. Uh, Relira, you probably can't see my ping, so it's the room to your left. And it's... Going to get in the window, he's just below the window, and round. Ray, it is your turn. This um, um is oh this, go ahead. This man inside the room has just thrown daggers at you and Yukina. Is he wearing metal? Like an armor or anything? Uh give me a s I don't think so, but let me take a look. No, the only thing that was metal that uh, he had in his hands was the daggers he threw at you. Uh, his garb is made of bones and leather. Oh, 
However, there is studs in the leather. Okay, let's... I'm just going to shillelagh him in the face. In hopes that he loses balance and then falls out the window. So... How, th how this works is you can either do a push attack that is going to use your strength, or you can you do your shillelagh. I'm going to shillelagh him. 100%. Okay. Well, uh, you need to be about five feet closer then. Okay. Yep. Strike reaction infused strike. Okay. So you rush this this man who just uh, stepped inside wearing a, a bone with horned helm. Um, or sorry, wearing a skull with horns. Looks an awful lot like a friend of yours you once knew. And you strike him in the side of the face. And as you do, you can have breathes towards uh, your staff and it becomes covered in frost which then transplants onto this man's face as you strike him. His helmed helmet, or his, sorry, his skull helmet clatters to the ground, uh, little chips of bone breaking away. He snickers. <laughs> Aw, that was cute. I'm gonna gut you like a fish. Got anything else? Um, one second. Um, I think that's it. All right, he gets halfway up. Zen, it is your turn. Okay. Um, Give me a perception. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Thoros, you can also give me a perception. Lost them. You hear Dernan shouting downstairs. What's all that noise up there? What's going on? It's the name boom. If you're not muted. You may go ahead. Um, but I heard that they're outside from the group earlier, right? Uh-huh. Okay. So Zin is going to run and run out the window. As you get to the window and you stick your head out, give me another perception before you decide whether you're going down or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with an 11, you don't see anybody currently outside. Okay. Yep. So I, um, I go out the window. Staying the same height that I am. You have a uh, fly ability? I do. I do. Okay. Right wing boots. Right. All right. We'll send. So that's uh, 20. Sorry. Let me pop back here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet. I'm still in the air. Um, am I able to see this guy now? Uh, I think you might have moved one too far because you were here. Five and fifteen. Five thirty. Uh, if I was here, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Do I, I can't go across here? Yeah, what? that's that's the one across there is twenty five, and this is thirty. Twenty five. Here is thirty though. Twenty five, thirty. Right. 
All right, I'll allow it. I mean, there's shutters on, as you can see, on the window there. Yeah, but that's why I was asking I'll, if I I'll, could I'll, cut across here. Yeah, yeah, I'll allow it. That's fine. Okay. Am I able to see him, or the shutters in the way? Um, what is that? There is that. I think that's just like a feeding trough for horses. So yeah, uh, yeah, you can see that there's one person near the the top of the rope here, and there's another um on the ground waiting to make his way up. Okay, sweet. I will shoot at the one that's near the top of the rope. All right. That's a hit. I'm going to use my favored foe on this one. <laughs> yeah, you want to describe it? As he's about uh, 20 feet in the air on the rope. Yeah, I, I catch him kind of like um, on the side of like the chest. And he as he lets go of the rope, he kind of hits the ground and splats a little right. bit. Because he's, like he's like 20 feet in the air, right? Yeah, yeah. And he, so you, maybe more like a heavy thud. Your, your hit was, I mean, it's it's still like, it's not a dirt street, right? It's like brick walkways and shit in this area. Oh, yeah, so, so he's going to splat a little bit. Yeah, yeah. His head. Yeah. Awesome. And then I'll fire one, the the other one, if I can see that one. Yeah, you can see him. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one, <laughs> this arrow, after such an amazing hit, and a great kill. This arrow, uh, you aim it a little too low, and it hits the ground and kind of just skips across the stones. And he just stands Wait, do I get there. advantage for height? Uh, I'm going to say on this one, no. You are okay, you are fair. higher, but uh, because of the distance plus the height, probably not. Yeah, it's not. not that big of a distance. Yeah. Got it. Um, it hits the ground and, and kind of skips across the stones. And he just kind of turns his head and watches this thing go by and he looks up at you and laughs and he starts to aim his crossbow at you okay um bonus action i will tell yukina to uh to fight anything that attacking ray okay and then yukina will move and bite whoops move up right up close and bite she's gonna just move right into his space i am in you now send it how are you supposed to get that crotch bite <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't bite. Mm. Yeah. Ow! Get your weird dog off me, you hear? And that's my turn. Why are its teeth so sharp? Um, this one is going to follow up he's going to whoops get stretched out apparently uh he is going to enter the well i just want to go to the festival uh let's see the okay this one uh pulls out a scimitar and another dagger God damn it. Why did I allow you to buy armor for Yukina? You didn't even allow me to buy it. You gave it to me as a reward. Fuck off. Did I really? You did. Yep, like, I... you did. <laughs> Why do I always make decisions I regret? Uh, yeah, doesn't even. It just. He's, he's stabbing and, and slashing with scimitars and daggers at Yukina. And it's just bouncing off. Yukina still got a hold of his fucking balls. Perfect. Uh, Ralira, you are up. As you are crouched between these two uh, uh, dresser nightstand looking things, um, the man has stopped in front of you and turned. You are now face to face with a uh, an attacker. What would you like to do? <laughs>
I'm gonna attack with my rapier. Okay. You brandish your rapier and you go for a slash. Or is it piercing? I can't remember. Piercing. You go for a stab. He nimbly dodges this, unfortunately. He puts it off to the side. And I believe rogues do not have a second attack. However, you do have your bonus action left. So you have a couple options for your bonus action. Um, you can use your object interaction to draw your dagger and a bonus action to attack with uh, the offhand. Or, which the latter might be the better move, you can use a bonus action to use your cunning action, which allows you to disengage. Um, and then you can run away. And what that does, you will not take an attack of opportunity. Which an attack All of right. opportunity means uh, if you leave his space without disengaging, he gets to try to attack you. I see. Um, yeah, I will disengage. Alright. So you stand up after, or sorry, you, after your, uh, your attack, uh, and it misses... You kind of do a leap and almost a cartwheel over top of this next dresser, landing in the next space here, and you begin to run. <clears throat> and how, uh, how long is your boots of speed active for? A minute, right? Ten minutes. Hot damn. Okay. Uh, so you still have fucking 55 uh, movement speed left. So 11 squares. Are you standing on the edge of that railing? For some dramatic effect? <laughs> you totally can. I'm just asking. Uh, no thanks. Okay. So... You guys see Ralira dash out of this room. Um, she leaps up onto the table, past the dead body on the floor, um, leaps off, and runs to get behind Junto. You guys can hear uh, through Ray's door um, fighting going on, screaming about a weird dog and and all kinds of things. Uh, is that the end of your turn, Valera? I guess so, eh? Uh, that was movement, bonus action, action. Okay. Yes. You, you can totally, you can roleplay during combat too, by the way. Like, you can talk, say things if you'd like. It's up to you. Takes no action. Okay. Next time around, I'll, I'm sure I'll, I'll get more of the hang of it. Hey, no worries, no worries. I'm just, uh, a lot of people forget that they can roleplay during combat, so I'm just making sure you knew. That's all. Thank you. Thoros, you're up. <laughs> I'm gonna dash. And by dash, you mean take two giant steps. Right. Object interaction, open the door. That puts me at seven. Okay. Deck save, please. 
Oh, that's right. Oh cool. no, the bunny. <laughs> You burst through this door, and as soon as you do, you are covered in animal fat and grease. Uh, as it hits the floor around you, I need another deck save to hold your footing. Yes, uh, your hooves managed to get a good grip before it slaps the ground and spreads out. Um, so you manage to keep your footing. You see, as you burst through the door... Yukina's jaws seem locked on uh, this this man's groin, who seems to be wearing studded leather armor and pieces of bone like jewelry. Got it. Still dashing. I close the distance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. And I will use Goring Rough. Oh, oh! Let's see it. I think it's the first time you've got to use it. It Are is. You gonna indeed. Spartan kick someone out the window? Yeah, not quite. Oh fuck yeah! Okay, That's way better. Roll me damage. Roll me damage. How much? You charge in, and as you get close, you lower your horns. Um, as you can as holding on to this man's balls. You know what? Give me another attack roll. See if you crit. You have advantage because she's kind of like got him in a death grip. In a headlock? Oh, you did not. You did not. Oh. Uh, -huh. uh yeah, no, you, you don't crit, but you still hit. You ram one of your horns into him and you feel uh the warmth spray over your head as you drive uh -huh. this horn into him and rip it out. Um, leaving him with a gaping hole in his side. And you know what? For my description, I feel like five piercing is not quite enough. Give me another damage roll. He screams in pain as he's kind of jerked to the side. He's going to try and stay standing. Is this guy? Uh... I'm going to say no. He topples to the ground. Uh, you can uh, still attach to his nutsack. And that's me. Oh, oh, this is going to be fun. Relira and Junto, I would like a, uh, give me a perception, please. <laughs> Junto, you're a little preoccupied, um, looking at the carnage you created with that one dead body on the floor. You're, uh can't help think to yourself i'm such a badass um relira however you start to hear footsteps coming up the stairs here and you hear from downstairs hey hey there's enough noise going on up there you don't need to go up there too hey all of you stop but the footsteps continue uh all right 10, 15, 20. Relira, as you turn to look to see what comes up the stairs, this man is, or this elf, is much like you. You recognize the garbs he wears. He smiles at you. <laughs> I knew we'd find you sooner or later. This man is... Or elf, I should say. Is a follower of Orcus. 
though a Shatter Kai, much like yourself, this particular um, order turned against the Shadow Queen and joined the forces of... Uh, sorry, no. We're going to go with Shar. Follow Shar. Says, uh... I know some people who wish to have a word with you. Would you mind possibly... <laughs> I don't know. Coming with me? You know what? It's not really a question. You're going to come with me as he uh, aims his short bow at you. And whiffs it so fucking badly. Junto, you, you feel an arrow whiz past your head and sink into this wall over here. Blast it! I, I knew I should have got better with the bow. And he's only got... Oh, shit. One attack. Okay, well, that's it for him. Junto, you turn to see uh, a new foe has come up from the stairs. A bow in hand. Huh? I didn't like, and I didn't like that he shot an arrow, so... Probably going to kill this dude. Hope he wasn't important. So Junto is going to give him the kitty claws. Oh, so kitty. Oh, shit. Yes, he is. Oh, damn. Yeah, he did. That fucking, that, that second roll hurts. Oh. You step in and you slash him. Uh, you end up uh, digging deep into his face with your first claw attack. It kind of spins his head around. And the, the pain, it obviously stings. But you then, as he turns back, you punch him directly in the solar plex. You feel some ribs crack. See, that is 21. Got anything else, big guy? Yeah, burn a key, and I'm gonna fuck him up again. Okay. I assume 17 hit. 17 hits? It does, yes. As you pull back, uh, you you then kick at his one knee and you feel it kind of crack as it moves inwards before pulling your foot back and planting another one into his solar plex. Uh, you feel more ribs crack and he immediately coughs up blood. He he's kind of he's staggering. He he's still up, but he's he's so fucked up. Can I spend another key? To do what? Yeah. Uh, so you, you, too you, late. using flurry of blows, um, using fl flurry of blows is your bonus action. It takes key to do it, but it still uses your bonus action. So it's past my attack then. Sorry, what? So, you kind of cut so out there. So it's past my attack, which means I can't use, um, what's it called? Uh, extra attack. Uh, you did use extra attack. Oh, I, uh, I mean, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I guess that was what I was thinking. Yep. Yeah, I guess that's it. All right. Where did I put the rest of them? There they are.
Another one comes rushing up the stairs, and behind him, yet another one. They all look almost identical. In fact, as you look at them, Junto, something off about them. Same kind of thing that is off about Rhaelyra. Get the feeling there. I ain't from these parts. For lack of a better term. And... Oh, there they are. Give me a second. I lost the stop block for a moment. Okay. Yeah, as they come up, uh, one of them pulls a... Actually, they both have their short bows out. And seeing you front and center, Jinto... Mother of Christ. Are you for real right now? Okay. Um, two arrows fly out, and you kind of do like a, I don't know, a Kung Fu Master-like jump spin. Matrix the fuck out of this. And they both zip past you and bury into this wall. Oh, here we go. This will be fun. A final one steps up stairs, gets to the top. You can tell? I need a constitution. Yeah. So oh my not... god, dude. Damn. Oh my god. Bro, I wrote so good on that too. I'm so glad that you you saved that. Cuz holy shit. Oh, it's a 20 foot radius sphere. Uh Yeah, I need Relier to make one as well. I thought it was a single target. It is not. Does it go around corners like a fireball? Oh, you passed too. Nice, nice. So all of a sudden, as, as this creature comes up, um, he looks very strange. I would like Relira. You can give me a nature or a history or an arcana. Your choice. You would know this particular creature to be a powerful blood mage belonging to the Order of Auric. Sometimes they will go hunting for something if paid enough. And since they have already looked at you by name, you feel like you are the target. He waves his arms and a large sphere forms. Mist permeates this area, filling. Sorry, uh, it is blood red in color. You breathe in, you can smell copper. So, you only take 20 damage and you are not incapacitated congratulations that goes for both of you unless uh you guys do you guys already have uh what's called evasion i think 
pretty sure i do yeah and if you do i'm pretty sure the rogue does because it, it it's it was a rogue ability first And that means you take zero damage on a successful save, right? Against... Oh, wait. Is it only dexterity? As I recall. Nimbly dodge out of the way. Yeah, so it's only dexterity. Um, so you still take the half damage. So you both take 20 damage. Um, the easiest way to do this, uh, Lauren, is if you click on your token... A green bubble pops up above your your token and if you click in there and you hit negative 20 and hit enter it will automatically subtract the, the um the number from your sheet and julian you take it as well 20. you hear a very um robotic voice and you're the only one who understands it it's a form of elvish but it's only spoken really in the shadow fell the master wishes to see you Rilira. you will come with us or i will kill all of your friends Should I say something? If you'd like to. What is your intention with me? You have vital information. That is all I will tell you. And I will get it. Or I will rip it from your mind. I know not of what you speak. <laughs> you will soon. And with that, we're going to move on to the Lord's turn. I mean, the creature. All right. Oh, he's going to get, uh... Relira, I would like a perception from you, please. Okay, he's not going to get sneak attack damage. Uh, as this goes on, uh, you hear footsteps behind you, and he kind of, uh, gets low behind this table and you hear a whoop as a hand crossbow goes off um you manage to sidestep and uh it nearly hits these other creatures that have been hunting you you hear damn it as the crossbow begins to reload 5 10 15 25 30 uh, you are the closest one. He is going to attack you as well uh, with a hand crossbow. That is the right one, right? Yes, Steve Floyd. Okay. He's going to make another hand crossbow. This one is going to make crossbow attack. What is your AC, Relira? What does that mean? So it's uh, your armor class. It will be up near your um, near your health. On your character sheet? 17. Uh, you have armor on. It's, that was not unchecked then if it's at 17 right now. I think. I don't think I have any armor to check or uncheck. I didn't see any. Uh, might be called leather or studded leather. Leather armor, plus one, third from bottom. I unchecked it. Uh, you have 15, which means it just barely hits. So, uh, you unfortunately are not able to, um, miss, or, um, you're not, un you're not able to dodge the second, uh, hand crossbow bolt, 
Uh, it pierces into your side, dealing eight piercing damage. He's not going to get uh, sneak attack damage, though, so you're lucky there. Uh, this bandit is in the window. 5, 10, 15, 5, 30, 5, 40, 5, 50, 55. I'm going to get there with a dash. Ray, you're up. Yes, he is still alive. He is okay. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's very he's pretty injured. Uh his but his injury does look worse than it is, if you take my meaning in player knowledge. Okay, then I am going to I guess I'll just shillelagh. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have advantage because he is prone and on the ground. Yup. As he's hold, he's got one hand on Yukon's head, trying to push her off. He's got another hand holding his, uh, or like his forearm over top of the gaping wound in his side, and you just like come up out of nowhere and just start pummeling him in the skull. No! And as I'm no. doing this, I'm saying, she's not a dog! <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then that's it. Um, he's looking pretty hurt now. He's looking pretty hurt. Uh, that bandit is going to just get inside the window. Zin, you're up. Awesome. Um, also, I forgot I actually have 35 feet of movement now because of roving. I just remembered that. Okay. Um, stay at level 6, but that's fine. Um, this guy's still here, right? Yeah, sure is. He's getting ready to climb that rope. Right, I'm going to send one at him. Uh... <laughs> no favorite bow on this one. Oh, I think <laughs> I forgot to roll him in, but... <laughs> Whatever, that's a hit. <laughs> yeah, Just you want to describe it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, as this one guy's like chuckling that uh, it just missed, and he kind of turns his head back towards me, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop him right in the chest. Okay. Um, and that's everybody here. So I'm gonna come back inside. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Oh, there's lots of people. Oh, there sure is. Okay, and they're physically fighting Junto as I pop through the door, right? Uh, they all have short bows in their hand, except this one, who is quite obviously some sort of caster. Junto, Junto um, definitely rocked one of them up, though. He's fucked up. Okay. Uh, bonus action, Hunter's Mark on the <laughs> caster. Okay. And then I'm uh, I'm going to shoot him. Mm, are you though? I don't know. You tell me. Is fifteen enough? Yeah, not, not quite. Um, as you go to uh, shoot this uh, this strange looking creature, um, looks almost like crystalline and robotic. Uh, he almost kind of just almost disappears for half a second, and your arrow punches the wall behind him. He smiles. This is between us and her. Those who get in our way will fall. He says it this time um, in Undercommon. Let's see you try. Um, and then um, that's it for my turn. You can I will bite the thing on the ground. Or not. Uh, she's got her jaws clamped on his dick, so give me another roll. Call it advantage. Sweet. And he's prone. Oh, so yeah, holy shit! It doesn't matter. Uh, she loses <laughs> her, her, her grip. 
as uh, she she's surprised as Ray comes in and just screams almost in her ear. She's not a dog. And she, you can just like huh? and let's go of the uh, the groin of this creature or this man. That is Yukina. All right, bonus action. I'm going to something sneaky, sneaky. Where is? There he is. Oh, that was not supposed to roll to y'all. Oh, not that it fucking matters. Uh, I'm going to say, then you're paying attention the other way. Rolira, you can give me a perception. Just short of enough. You don't see him coming. Where's his sneak attack on? Oh, there it is. Should have had advantage. That's my bad. Uh, a 15. Which I believe that just hits Alira. Or Rolira. Eight piercing. Two poison. And 12 sneak attacks. So that is a total of 22 damage. This arrow pierces uh, your back. And in rapid succession, two more fly at you, though she doesn't have he doesn't have sneak attack anymore. Twelve misses and a twenty-one hits. Uh so six piercing and two poison, so another eight damage as a second bolt slams into your back. Bandit Captain is going to use his half his movement to stand up. And he is going to attack. You know what? He's probably going to attack the, the one that was on his balls, I'll be honest. That's fair. Uh, a 22 hits, yes? Yep, it does. Seven slashing. Uh, however, as he as he pulls back, his, his other uh, attacks are not uh, not well timed or staged properly, so they just kind of bounce off her armor. Seven piercing to Yukina. Relira. So, I think I only am at five health. So, can I still do the things that I do, or? I would imagine that okay, I would so, be quite hindered. So how this works is, yes, you can still do the things you normally do until you hit zero HP. However, um, I don't think I went over this this rule with you. So we don't use numbers, uh, but we can use descriptions. So if you're really low, uh, you can say, oh, you know, Relira uh, calls for some help uh and then give a description like you know I've, I've got several holes in me i'm i'm bleeding from everywhere and i look really weak you know like like i'm not gonna last much longer something to that that degree okay uh am i able to call out to lira uh, uh Relira, sorry i mean she's right next to you hell yeah yeah so uh, i will let i will like be like Lyria, uh, uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I will call out to her. My brain cells are terrible right now. 
Because I could uh, at this point, I'm going to visibly see that she's bleeding from places. She's right beside me, right? Oh yeah, yeah, she's fucked up. So I'm going to call out to her that to try to get past me when she has a chance uh, to stay safe, and I'll protect her. You may respond if you wish, Rolera. Thank you. But player to player, want... you can still take your shots before okay. you. Okay. Um. Ugh. Um. Well, you get that in order. I got my headphones on. I can hear you, but I got to run to the bathroom. So you could like go in and stab somebody, then disengage and hide in the room. Yeah, shank and run. So how are we doing on an idea? Um, can I use uh, one of my healing potions? Mm-hmm. Um, so to do a healing potion, if you want to roll to see how much you, you, uh, you get, it is a bonus action to take it. However, you can get the max effects if you use an action to take it. And you can only do one healing potion per round, though. So um, I'll do an action to take the uh, potion of greater healing. Okay. Um, greater healing. That is 4d4 plus 4, I believe, right? So 20. Get a full 20 HP back. The blood starts coming back, or not that I have much color to begin with, but the little color that I do have starts coming back into my face as I catch my breath. Yeah, the, the, wind, the wounds start to seal up. Arrows fall out of your back. So you still have your movement and your bonus action left. And has it been uh, more than 10 minutes? Uh, no. So a um, one full round of combat is only six seconds. So one uh, minute, one minute is 10 rounds. Yeah, and I think we've done three so far. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think this is the third round. Okay, I am going to, um, or wait, can I? So you do still have your bonus action left. Um, so it is up to you if you wish to uh, use your reaction to put away, or sorry, your object interaction to put away your rapier and pull out your bow. So you got some range. 
if you wish. Or you can use your bonus action to hide. Um, yeah, I'll do the bonus action to pull out my bow. All right. And just to check, I'm not allowed to, I can't, I don't have an action for putting my hood on, right? Putting my hood on is an action. Um, it's a magic item, right? Yes. Which one? The Cloak of Elvenkind. I would say that that would have to take your um your object interaction, which you use to put your uh, scimitar away. Okay. Thoros, you've heard shouts of pain. Uh, was probably from Rolira outside the door, and you hear more footsteps coming. But you also have this man standing before you. What would you like to do? Thoros loses his shit and lets out a primal scream of rage and hatred. And slams his halberd or attempts to slam his halberd into this man's chest. All right, let's see it. Oh, yeah. Great reaction with it. Okay. I didn't have rage checked, so let me. Oh. I think it's a plus two flat. It might be a plus three at this level. Ah, uh, just plus two. Okay. You slam your halberd into his solar plex with great strength, and it kind of like slams him against the wall, and he's he's holding the, the shaft of this weapon sticking out of his chest, trying to push it back. But with your large form and your strength, your muscles tense, and you will not let him take it out. Got it, so he's still breathing? Barely. Okay, I'm going to take the opportunity attack that's coming and move this way. Oh. Okay. So you, you rip it back out after a moment. And he he's kind of like leaning against the wall. He's trying to keep his arms with his weapons up, but they're, they're kind of staggering down towards the sides. You make it back towards the door. Oh, no opportunity attack? He's going to try. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. He kind of like tries to weakly swing his scimitar and it just catches air. He was far too late. Got it. And since I've moved 10 feet, I'm going to jump over this body so as to avoid having to pay double movement for it. So two, four, and damn, I'm a long way from there. That's sick. Shitballs. All right, one, two. That is, um, that's a railing. And I can't jump twice. All right. What's this right here? Um, like a, a stool. All right. Three, four, and... What is your movement speed? 40. That would be 40 there, sir, unless you want to change the, the way you moved. I think that's the most efficient way to get as much distance as I can. All right, this guy's dead, right? Um, Or where did he come from? Oh, no, he, he came in from uh, this room up here. Oh. Okay, so he's there. Well, shit, I'm not going to run past the living guy. Da, 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 I'll stop there. 
Sorry, that's me. Thanks, I Zach. I'm just living guy. I, I, I bonus to action raged. Oh, I do get an extra attack, don't I? Uh huh. Yeah, you melee, yeah, bro. You bar you yeah, melee. you bay bar barbarian. I'm an idiot. Okay. Did you really just say bay barbarian? Um, <laughs> like, no. like barbarian with a babe in it? That's what it sounded like. No, I did not. So I'm going to stab this guy a second time or try to. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yep. Twelve. Yeah, you want to describe it? Pull the halberd back out of him, slam it into his belly, and draw it up, uh, disemboweling him. Pulling it back out and letting it fall to the ground. And now I will move over here. And... Hmm. So for this guy to try and move through me would be a contested strength, right? <laughs> yeah. Got it. And it's not going to matter whether I'm here or here. Right, you taking up the whole door. Yeah. Gonna try. Stand right here on this guy and take up the whole door. And as I get out here and I see all these little elf things, no offense really or Zen, uh, I'm going to hurl racial epithets at them, uh, suggesting they are weak and born of something objectionable. So as to attempt to draw their fire. And that will be me. Runs out the door, shit talks everybody in the room. Oh, that was great. Um, right? Sorry, I, was, I don't know how long I was fucking muted for. <laughs> but... I was going to say, I smell bitch in here. <laughs> we are at um, the top of the order, so you guys have a choice. We can continue until this fight's done, or we can end it here, and we'll pick up the rest of the combat next time. Um, fortunately, Lauren, I got something to do tonight. Okay. Well, that settles it then. Um, thank you everybody for coming. And uh we will see you here in two weeks, cause I got a surprise party. At least I think I do. I got call somebody, see what they're saying um about the thing. But yeah. Good game, everybody. Uh, I'm just gonna outro my stream. I'll be back in a minute. Damn it, snow! <laughs> Holy fuck! Oh my god. What the shit. Well, thank you everybody for coming and hanging out. We have got uh, some more D&D this weekend. Uh, we got some Space Marine 2. So tonight, I'll uh, be back uh, in a few hours to play some Space Marine 2. We have Adventures in Wildmount tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which we are getting near the end of it. It's a, been a five-year campaign, maybe almost six, I think. And we have four to six sessions left. So definitely come back for that. And then Monday with our... Uh, our, our Monday night crew of the boys, we are going to be playing some Space Marine by the sounds of it, instead of um, Deadlock or Halo. So, I cannot wait to see everybody there. Uh, we have a few people, though. So, let's see. Who's who's around that I can raid? Give me a moment here. Uh, we got... You know what? Uh, there's somebody else running some D&D. &D, so, how about we raid Arcanum? Or Ar Arcadum, my bad. Uh, so if you want to exclamation mark raid in my chat, you know what? I'll just do it. I finally set up a a, a a raid thing. So, you know, copy and paste that into the next guy's chat, and we are gonna raid Arcadum.
You definitely, yes, join the Discord. Oh, I also have a giveaway going. I forgot about that. Uh, Prime subs count. Uh, actually, if you look at my... Uh, if you actually put in... Um, where is it? Hold on a sec. Uh, uh, September and... So, we have a giveaway going, and there's going to be some wild shit happening this month uh, into the start of next month um, for September, plus it's my birthday. So, we got, we, it's my birthday month, so we got a lot of shit going on this month. Definitely pop in for that. Uh, thank you, uh, Morgoth, Morgoth D Wizard, and Snowbubble, and Mama Snow for hanging out with me today. Um, we will definitely see you all soon, and once again, don't forget to copy this. And we are going to go raid Arcadum. Um, he's also running some D&D. Did it not give you a sub notification? I'm sorry about that, Mama Snow. Um, I might be having an issue. I've got a lot of bots going on now, so they might not all be working. You know what I'm saying? Um, but <laughs> uh, don't worry, because how I check it anyways is I check who is subbed um, on the last day of the month. And it'll tell me, you know, who's subbed with Prime and so on. But thank you very much for the Prime sub, Mama Snow. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, say hi to uh, Arcadum for me. We're going to head out there and uh, hopefully uh, you'll enjoy his streams as well. Remember, everybody. Savage, you go home. Pieces.